right, it looks like we're live, ready to go. And I uh, want to say, hey, thank you to the early birds that are here. It's like seven of y'all all ready to go before we've even gotten started here. So that's really cool. So we only have a few decks built because I don't normally play, uh, I guess, alchemy. <laughs> but I decided, you know what, I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, found some different lists, tweaked them up, added some cards, removed some things. But we do have some fun decks to play. So this should be entertaining. I'm going to have to read a lot of cards, though, because, like I said, I don't play a lot of alchemy. And there was definitely a lot of cards I had to look through, which is why I had a late start today. I had to really, like, comb over a bunch of cards that I haven't even looked at in, gosh, the better part of a year and a half, probably. But uh, before we get rolling here, since we have about another minute before we kick things off, if you're in the chat, let me know where you're from. Let's do a roll call. Where's everybody watching from this morning? Or afternoon. It's actually afternoon, almost evening for some of y'all, depending on where you're watching from. Or it could be tomorrow if you're on the other side of the world. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, we're rolling up to 1 p.m. Pacific time here, and we're about ready to get started. So, let's... I think I'm going to start with this Gruel Ramp list here. So, we'll take a look so y'all know kind of what's going on here with what we got happening. But, basically, it's typical ramp. We've got halflings, topiary stompers... This thing that uh, I hadn't even seen before, but apparently is in uh, alchemy. So this actually lets us search for lands, which is cool. This is another alchemy card that lets us get to Mishra's Foundries, which is kind of random. From New York and Oklahoma. I haven't been in New York in ages. Last time I went to New York was, man, like 20 years ago, I think. Uh, really cool, though, from Oklahoma. I'm, I'm actually I used to live in Texas for a while, so that wasn't too far away. Watching from the Netherlands. Hey, Robert, you've been in a few of my things. Thank you for stopping by. Yeah, it is a little late for you there. Illinois. I, You know, the only time I've been to Illinois is actually to the airport in Chicago. I don't think I've even driven through it, actually, which is weird. I really need to stop and hang out there sometime. Night of the Meredith Island, Indian Ocean. Oh, wow, that is really cool. Happy if you read the cards. I will read the cards, actually, as we play them. Uh, this is... This is uh, an interesting deck because what we're going to be aiming to do is get obviously you know mana ramp from this get lands from topiary stomper these two guys but then try to play this new card hue of the Entwood. so it lets you sacrifice any number of lands and then you reveal x cards from the top of your deck which are equal to the number of lands <laughs> don't come it sucks juju says uh you know it might i'm not a big fan of the airport there in chicago so maybe the rest of the state is rough too i don't know uh, but yeah, so after you sacrifice those lands, you reveal any number or choose any number of artifacts and or lands. And then you put the artifacts into play, then you put the lands into play. Now, we only have a couple of artifacts, but they're really good ones. We're playing the Friction Flesh Gorger, which obviously is really nice, and we're playing Portal to Phyrexia. So if we can get either one of these into play, that's going to turn the game really nicely. But we do also ramp up to other big things. We have a Tali, obviously, lets us get some free stuff. We have Titan of Industry, and one of the new cards is Last March of the Ents. I'm going to really goof around this card because I feel like if we could get Natalia or a Titan down and then just, like, draw seven and then just cast stuff for free, that seems really cool. But I don't know if it's actually going to work or not. But I figure if we're going to ramp, we might as well ramp to the biggest things in the set and do some fun things here. Uh, people are starting to roll in here. What do we got? Uh, man, you need to come out to the East Coast. So we can play our... I was out there a couple months ago. I was in Orlando. And last year, I went to a uh, Star City thing in Virginia. And before, just before COVID, I was in Philadelphia. Actually, no, I was in Philadelphia last or a couple months back, too, for the Magic Con. I've been on the West Coast or East Coast a few times recently, actually. Uh, dun, 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 dun. I found out your video... found your videos... And was like, I should give her this arena a try. You know what, Swifty? It's it's really a thing that... It's it's a free-to-play. Obviously, like all free-to-play things, you can spend money or whatever. But the truth is, it's kind of a good different way to play Magic and pass the time. Like, for me, since I've been staying busy making videos and stuff, I don't get to play as much as I want. So it is kind of cool just to have access to arena. Especially on mobile, when I've been at the airports and stuff lately. And just have some downtime and play. And that's pretty cool. So it's a, it's another way to just kind of stay engaged uh, if you want to. Easy now. You worked in the control tower in Ord in Chicago. Hey, I'm just saying. Like the Chicago, I'm surprised it's Chicago airport because O'Hare is like always rated really highly. It seems like, 
but the way they have it laid out for incoming and outgoing traffic as far as people seems like it's just all kind of jammed up in one spot. Like the actual like facilities itself aren't bad. It's just the traffic structure of the people is not the best. Uh, deck looks sweet. Do I have an exclusive Lord of the Ring deck? No, I don't. I don't even like. Here's the thing. I played the early, not the early, like the pre pre release with loading ready run last weekend, and I don't think you could like even if I could do a full Lord of the Rings deck, I'd just be at a disadvantage against every single opponent I play against. You know what I mean? Like we could do it, but we just never win a game. Because opponents would have other removal spells, they'd have other ramp spells, they'd have other counter spells. Like, we just would be limited, unfortunately. So it wouldn't really make much sense to do that. Uh, hey, from Austria. Oh, that's cool. I don't have that many viewers from Austria, I don't think. That's really neat. Arena Mobile is a lifesaver? Yeah, it is. Isn't Lord of the Rings supposed to be a modern legal set? Yes, in paper, theoretically. Um, it's not going to be standard legal. You will be able to play it, I believe, in Modern Legacy and, and Vintage, obviously. On Arena, you'll be able to play it, I guess, in Alchemy and Historic. But we, you will not be able to play it in just regular Standard. It's a little bit weird because Alchemy is, like, Standard adjacent, but you just won't be able to play it uh, in regular Standard. Don't know why. Only thing I could really theorize is that the cost of the booster pack is a little higher and they don't want to have a standard set that doesn't have a normal price booster if you were to go buy it in the stores and have to play standard. But other than that, I don't know a good reason. Because I played with the cards last week. They were totally fine. Nothing that I felt was out of the ordinary that would make it too complicated or too powerful for standard. I think it's just, just the cost of the packs is my guess. I don't really have another good reason, honestly. That's the only thing I can think of. Uh, did you, I like Arena because I have severe anxiety so I can play the game without dealing with people or leaving my home. That's actually real, Juju. I was talking about this before, and anybody who's followed my content knows, like, I actually don't play a lot of games where I actually have to directly communicate with the opponents. Which is weird because I'm actually very much a people person, but people in online games tend to just be jerks, and I just don't feel like dealing with it. I mean, can I deal with it? Sure. But, like, when it's my downtime, I'm trying to chill and just enjoy a game. Like, I don't want to play those games. So, any first-person shooters like Overwatch, Call of Duty, whatever, I haven't even touched those in probably a decade. Probably the same thing could be said about... Actually, not true. I guess about six or seven years ago, I tried playing League of Legends again. It was still just as bad <laughs> community-wise, so I don't play that anymore. The only thing I'm really playing these days are, like, Teamfight Tactics, Magic, whatever variants, and... I'll be playing Diablo 4, but I, again, I could play Diablo 4 with just friends, or I could go run around by myself. I don't have to communicate with other people, so. Maybe I'll start a thing in the Discord, though. If y'all want to play Diablo 4, we'll fire up and run some groups of people and go kill some demons in Diablo. I think that could be fun. Uh, good to see an early stream. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Uh, catching up. Started at the beginning. I stay in Orlando. I was just down there uh, a couple months ago. I'm glad they decided to put the set in Arena because I play a lot of Gladiator and a lot of these cards. Yeah, if you play Gladiator or you play Brawl, you will be able to use the Lord of the Rings cards. So that would be totally fair. Yeah, everybody says Diablo 4 is really good. I've just been so busy with travel and recording stuff that I just haven't had a chance to download it and play. But I definitely want to play some Diablo for sure. Yeah, if a lot of people really want to, like I said, I'll put a thing in the Discord and we could we could make a, a channel for it if people want to play. Uh, link should be in the description if you want to join the Discord, by the way. Am I going to Con in Barcelona? No, truthfully, <laughs> I tried to weasel my way into that one to get sponsored for a thing or to be on a panel, but unfortunately, I am not. Uh, I was actually going to reach out to MTG Malone, because I think he's going, and we had talked and met up in in Vegas about if there was an event in Europe, I would go over and visit, but like it just didn't work out, and unfortunately... I have a bunch of travel coming up. Next week, I'm going to be down in L.A. filming some stuff with Tabletop Jocks. And then I have another small project. And then I have family coming to visit. So that's a lot of time and money I'm giving up that I just couldn't justify Barcelona on my own dime, unfortunately. So I won't be doing that. Much as I would like to. I really would have loved to. Actually, just taking a break from Diablo to heat my, my dominoes. I don't blame you, Carl. Like, it, you can dive into that. 
for sure. But all right, let's hop in and play some games. Let's see who we can run into here. We're going to fire up this Gruul ramp deck and see what we can do with it. I hope we hit the big spells in this, because I feel like it could do some really cool things. I just don't know if they'll happen. <laughs> okay, this is a good start. I mean, I'd rather not draw the portal to Phyrexia, but this is this is at least okay. We can make this work. I kind of like this, this battlefield, too. It sort of looks like a little hobbit home. I like what they're doing there. All right, ramp up Topiary Stomper. Go get a forest. All right. So we can play the other Stomper, get another forest. That'll give us one, two, three, four, five. Oh, that's almost good enough. We might just straight up play Portal in a couple of turns here. Wasn't really part of my plan, but uh, check this out. This little Delighted Halfling is going to get in there for one. That's officially the second time I have attacked with one of these for one, because I did that at the uh, pre pre release one time, too. Oh, are they just playing elves straight up? That's something. All right, so we're going to go turbo ramp in here. Let's let this go get a basic. And then we play this, and let's let us get two copies of Mishra's whatever. Uh, get rid of this. And then now we can attack with these things. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have exactly nine. So we will be able to straight up play Portal to Phyrexia next turn. Spider. Oh, man. All right, cool. All right, so we know the deck works. Cool, cool. Okay, that was my biggest thing. I wanted to see if the deck works. Obviously, beating Sparky is not that big a deal. But I just wanted to make sure... That we can actually do stuff with this and that it works. Uh, sure. We'll just get a thing back. Alright. And this is mostly just to, like, test how all the cards work and whatever. Yeah, we'll just sacrifice all of them. Do the biggest thing we can do here. I could also have tapped them for mana beforehand. Doot, 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 doot. Uh, what am I choosing for? <laughs> Uh, let's see. Put all the two in the I genuinely don't know what I'm choosing for here. <laughs> then put the rest on the but Yeah, I don't. What am I missing? Alright, well, I don't know. I'm just going to pick a random color. We'll call green. I don't know. Oh, I'm choosing for the Forsaken Crossroads. It just wasn't in play yet. Got it. <laughs> that was weird how that worked out. Okay, cool. We know that works then. Alright, will I be there for Vegas? I should be in Vegas, yes. Oop, oh, 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 not a bot match. We did that already. Uh, how do I get out of this? I should be able to be... Oh, I gotta do something over here, I'm sure. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Unlock play modes. There we go. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Do, do, do. All right, now we can go in and battle peoples. Let's go find a match. We're just going to go in the play. We have to do the alchemy play queue, and let's go. But yeah, I, I should be in Vegas, though. But that's not till September, I think. They just put that up. All right, this is not the fastest, but not terrible. So we're gonna go ahead and keep it. I mean, we can go. We can't cast this yet, unfortunately. Because we got to get to the upper end of things. Um, mm, mm, mm. let's just. This comes into play tap, so let's just go ahead and do that. We'll call green with that one. Actually, I could call black and give me an opportunity to cast the Bricks in Flesh Gorger, but I think we're going to get to seven. I'm not going to worry about that. One, two, three, four, five. We might as well leave that on top. It's fine. I can just put that into play next turn. All right. Let's see what we got. Chronicler. I've seen some people play that before. I've tended to stay away from it. Alright, get a 3-4. We will sack. 
I guess this. Go get us some Mishra's foundries. So, so far, so good. We're moving right along. A Celestis. All right. I, I'm going to feel really bad if our board gets swept, but at least we'll have a lot of mana and we won't be too far away from a Flesh Quarter. Bona is playing a lot of... Ooh, we got the Hue of the Antwoods. Oh, do I just go for it now? Nah, we wait. We wait. We can get more land. It's tempting, though. <laughs> get that. And... We'll just attack for three. I mean, if the opponent blocks, double blocks, we don't really care. Alright. I think we're going to hew the Entwood next turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That'd be all the mana. But might be worth it. Oh, but we got an Atali too. Never mind. We're going to Atali first, I guess. <laughs> Just for greed factor. Got to be greedy when you can be. Oh, we got one anyway. Look at that. Oh, that was so good. Uh, We'll just draw two cards. And we're going to sack all of these. Since we have land in hand, even. Oh, portal. We get two portals? Okay, that's cool. Not how I expected that to go, but we'll take it. Man, this is savagery. This is this is nuts. Just so wild. Uh All right, they're going to Celestis. Yeah, we have way more than enough here. And we're going to get one of their things. Actually, we're going to get multiples of their things. I guess we'll take that. And this. Like, why not? And just attack for piles. Man, that was gross. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, that was gross. Uh, what do I think about a commander type format, but with standard only cards? Should there be a limitation, like a 60-card deck? We had that for a while. We, When I was still at Wizards, we that was a format for a season or two. Uh, what did we call that? It wasn't Commander. It was, I don't know, it, like, was it... Man, I really can't remember the name of it. I don't know if it was, like, Lieutenant or something. Like, I don't remember. But that was a thing we did, actually, where it was standard legal brawl, effectively. And it was fine. Like, it... it past some time and you know it it served a purpose but honestly most people you're gonna want to play with more cards that's kind of the benefit of playing commander and when you reduce it to just playing with standard like you kind of end up with everybody playing the same cards because if you're playing green or you're playing black or you're playing red like there's always going to be effectively like a top 15 or top 20 that you're kind of going to be at a disadvantage if you don't play whereas when you play Commander or, you know, 100-card formats or whatever, with a wider pool, you just get to do more things, right? You can build around Commanders easier. Because even in Standard, technically there's a lot of Legends you could play with, but there's not enough cards to build around each Legend. So realistically, whatever color or color combinations you're playing, there's probably only three to five that are really any good to be competitive, you know, and have a good game. So, you probably won't ever see that really be a popular thing. Um, mm, 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 mm. Actually, yeah, I think it was, you're right, I think it was just standard Brawl. And then Brawl became what it did on Arena and let you start playing with, like, Historic and Alchemy cards or whatever. Uh, this set, only in Alchemy. Alchemy and Historic, I believe. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Was that turn four? Uh, let's see. Let's let's look back. Was it turn four? Turn one, we played that. Turn two, we did nothing because we played a Forsaken Crossroads. Turn three, we played that. Turn four, we played this. Turn five is what that was. We played a Tali on five. Got but we got the Hue of the Entwood, the two portals, 
sacked all of our land, got all this silliness happening, and we killed him, I guess, technically on turn six, but the game was over on turn five. So, yeah. That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm not, not too upset about that. That was pretty strong. I don't expect every game to go like that either, though. <laughs> like, that feels... Like, I don't know if that was, like, our premium draw, but it was pretty close. It was about... Probably, like, the second or third best draw we can get. I, I wouldn't expect it to be that way every time. <laughs> Arrived late from St. Louis, Missouri. I have... Man, I haven't been to St. Louis in a long time either. I, I had one brief stop there many years ago. I need to go back there. Really nice people and really good food in St. Louis. Uh, this one, we are going to have to mulligan. Okay, this is a lot better. We'll keep this and probably just scrap the Forsaken Crossroads. I don't... I mean, I guess technically we could call green and then just play it turn one to scry. Eh, I mean, I guess that's fine. Okay. Like, not... Ideal, but just extra information probably isn't bad. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You don't get both. You get to scry or untap. Well, yeah, I could have got rid of it. That was stupid. Could have just had more colors. Not that it matters, but... All right. Start the hunt to go get our mana. And then we'll play another Topiary Stomper and have up a Volcanic Spite, I suppose. Man, we are finding a bit too much mana to be comfortable here. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think I'm just going to kill this, so we're the only ones ramping. Seems a little silly, but why not? Okay, that'll get us to seven, so we can start attacking with Topiary Stomper, so that's good. Ooh, Sakinza, not bad either. Get that forest out of here. Get some attacking in with the whole pile, I think. Yeah, why not? This is strong. All right, they get uh, the big Jugan so they can start making other things bigger. That doesn't put a creature into play, so that's good for us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to have nine mana. We could literally cast everything in the deck. Like, come on, deck. Give us one of our big spells. That is not one of the big spells. <laughs> we are attacking just the same, though. Maybe we attack with everything? Yeah, they, we have to attack with everything. Because if they block the one one, they die. So that's fine. Oh, I could have attacked with the lands, too. That would have been game. Ah, that was dumb. It's alright, if they sweep the board here, we'll just make 1-1s, one -ones and then we have those, so... It doesn't really matter. Alright. We kind of still had all these, the way it works out. Uh, that doesn't do much here, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, let's turn that into a dude. Let's turn this into a dude, since we should have done that last turn. With all the mana that we had. And get piles of damage in there. Man, this is crazy. <laughs> this this deck is awesome. Uh, let's see. Isn't that just standard Brawl Arena? Yep. Uh, uh, let's see. A two-lander could be keepable with that Cultivator since it's cheaper. Oh, yeah, absolutely, Robert. Like, that. that's for real. You play Magic the Gathering. I do play Magic the Gathering. That's what we're playing today. Do I play Commander? I'm on the Commander Advisory Group, so I sure hope I play Commander, or that would be weird. <laughs> but to answer your question, yes. All right. Well, two up, two down. Now, this has been uh, virtually cakewalking. Hey, all right. Ooh, this hand's way slow compared to the other ones. Um, what do we do with this? I think we have to get rid of it. Because we can't... There's, like, basically three things we can't cast. So let's keep this. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of this. Put it back in the deck. 
And we might just be scrying on one. I think that that's that's probably what we're gonna do here. Let's just call red. Actually, this is a little tough. I think I have to call green. So I can make sure I can cast the cultivator when the time comes. Oh no, I have green lands anyway. Yeah, let's call red. And we will just scry. And flesh gourd. The other flesh gourder. Dang it. Uh, yeah, I guess that has to go to the bottom. That means we're probably not likely to hit a flesh gourder when we cast this Hugh the Entwood. So that's a little disappointing. Not a lot we can do about it, though. Yep. We just passed. Man, and we drew the portal. No! <laughs> All the cards we want to get with our tricks, we actually just drew them. That's pretty terrible. Uh, yeah, we just put this back in. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was so bad. That was so bad. Okay. Um, that's at least doing something, I guess. Let's play this on green. We can cast the halfling. So we can untap it. And then we can leave mana up for volcanic spite. Which is okay, because we could get rid of Besaidu if we needed to. And just cast the Cultivator, because it'll be cost two less with no lands in hand. So that's probably okay. I think the opponent's going to try to flash something. Oh no, you're going to Golems bite that. Okay, yeah, that, that works. That's a real thing. Consider, sure. Alright, let's see what we got. Oh, okay. That ended up not being the worst thing. Still a little bit of ways from that. However, we get to play this and go find a land, so that's good. Don't counter this, please. We need the lands. We need the lands badly. Oh, I think it is getting countered. Oh, no, it's just returning it to our hand. Actually, that's fine. Oh, no, because I don't have the red land open. That was not fine. That was bad, actually. Okay, well, I will just play this. And we'll try again. They might just return it to our hand again. Is this like... Looks like some type... I guess it's just some type of Vesper control or something. Man, I've, I hated every version of this card in the past. And I still hate it now. But that's okay. Because now they probably just have counters. And like, oh, Saruman. Okay, well, I can't kill that. That's a thing. All right, do we just gamble on Hugh the Entwood, y'all? Because this is our one shot. I think we do it. Sadly, we know our good artifacts are on the bottom of the library. So this probably just ends up being nothing and we can say... Oh, what? We got him anyway. Oh, look at that. This is the worst. <laughs> but we might get their Saruman, so that's kind of sweet. And all we have is a delighted halfling in our yard. All right, those go off. We get a Saruman. And uh, I guess, do we have a way to draw cards? I don't think we do. So I'm going to get our own creature back so we have more mana to work with. Uh-oh. Are they going to return it to their hand or something? Exile it for benefit? Oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. That getting cut down is not the worst thing that could happen there. Uh, yeah, we, we just end the turn. <laughs> this is so silly. Like, I gambled. <laughs> and I don't even know if it results in anything positive. It was just like the biggest gamble we could take there. And the opponent concedes. Awesome. <laughs> uh, that's so good. Uh, I love it. I love it. Like, the one opening we had, we hewed the Entwoods, and then just go ham with two portals. This is stupid. This, <laughs> uh, this shouldn't be this much, much fun. Like, the opponent literally stopped, whatever, like, three cards in a row, killed our actual mana creatures, whatever, and then, like, the one spell that happened, that ended the game. <laughs> Uh, that's funny.
Uh, Brian, what kind of deck is this? That's it. You literally saw what the deck does. Uh, that, that was it. How often do I crumb across people you know while playing on Arena? Recognize the name. Um, like, maybe once a week. You know, not too often. But it's also because I just met a lot of people playing Arena. So it's not that uncommon for me to run into people I know. Or another creator. Maybe, like, other creators, like, once every other week. Uh, okay, let's... Ooh, let's mulligan this. Actually, I mean, I have this, so let's just tuck one of these. But yeah, I'm gonna mulligan anyway. At least get to some semblance of mana things we can use. Uh, let's keep this, scrap this. And yeah, this will have to do. <laughs> Reading you the hint would seem so bad, but it's this is crazy. Yeah, it seems bad, but it actually does really big things. All right. You know what's funny? I almost would rather... Oh, they're, they're ramping. I was going to say, I'd almost rather not have a land in hand here so I could just play this for two on that turn. It would have been way better. But here we are. So let's see what we can do. They still have access to two mana here and could be legends. Nope. They did not have a thing there. So we're just going to go with Topiary Stomper. See if it resolves. It does. I feel like we won something. All right, so we're at five when we play the next land. If the Cultivator resolves, that's six. So we're getting close. We're getting close. Mariner. So they are playing the Scry deck. I actually have one of those myself. So, oh, this is nice. So check this out. We can go straight up to seven here. Get one of those. Play this. Get another forest, I guess. Why not? And then attack for four. We are on it. And then we can just go big Titan next turn. Or Flesh Gorger, whichever we feel is necessary. Man, that's wild, because this hand started out looking real bad. <laughs> and then, like, slowly became something. Though the opponent's hand is still loaded, so we could easily lose this. Because they've got plenty of mana, a way to tap a thing... They get to scry. They've got five cards. So there's there's a lot of moving parts here still. All right. Scry two, draw two. Oh, they bought them both. That's a good sign for us, usually. They get to tap a creature. Probably those. That makes sense. <laughs> and they get attack. Because I think they scry when they attack, too, right? Yeah. So they can get in for three, for sure, here. But this is kind of okay, because this is like a race we can win. So we're not super concerned about it yet. However, it does make me want to play this first. Because they would have to lose life every time they target it. So let's try that. See if it resolves. They might... Oh, they're going to have Fading Hope. Because it scries. Yeah. I have that in my list as well. They're getting to see a lot of cards, though. Alright. And now they have six mana. And there's so many wild legends. They can play who knows what. <laughs> so you're kind of kind of just sitting here waiting to see what happens. Elrond. That's a 4-4. Four, four. Whenever you scribe, put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to X creatures, where X is the number of cards you saw. Okay, what are we going to try to do here? Can't attack with these little ends, so I think we're just attacking with the big seven. I think that's our game plan here. Okay. I think we're going to go with this and just go biggie size. Man, I feel sort of bad. I really haven't cast Lord of the Rings cards this game. I've cast them every other game, but not this time. All right, they're going to scry. Obviously, get to put counters on something. All right, get to tap some things. Put a plus one on something. Sounds good. And here comes something else. Arwen's gift. All right, scry two, tap a thing, add two counters. Still have two mana open. 
Man, they are they are doing the thing right now. So while it looks like we've got the upper hand, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Because they oh wait, wait. They can only block one flesh gorger right now. They have to play another creature. Because they both have menace. That is not gonna do it. So unless they have a way to flash in a thing, that should be game. Oh, there you go. Play that. Opponent, you gotta play the other creature. Those are big though. They will definitely kill my two flesh gorgers. Opponent, you gotta play the creature, opponent! Oh! Oh! There you go. I thought they were gonna pass the turn and not do it. That, that was gonna be real bad. Uh, yeah, we attack with everything, though, because they have to block the flesh gorgers here or die. Just double checking. Nothing crazy with lifelink. Yep. We are attacking. I mean, we get to kill their best creatures, effectively, I guess. Yep, that's the way to do it. We will be killing... Well, both of those die, I guess. It doesn't really matter. And we definitely want to kill Elrond. Though I have a feeling they have another. But I don't think we mind too much. We can go with this. And I'll make the 4-4 and probably put a shield on it. Or put a shield on the Titan. And then we'll just play this little delighted halfling. My opponent still has a lot in hand here, so we'll see what happens. But they are only at two. And then playing a land makes us feel a little bit better. All right, now I think we're we're pretty good. Oh, nope, they're just passing. Maybe not. Okay, another Flesh Gorger's good here. Yeah, I think we I think we just attack. I think everything attacks, right? Even the little halfling? One, two, three. Yeah, okay. <laughs> We're 4-0. Oh. I don't know what to say. Like, that game didn't even feel like a good game for us. And somehow we won that one. Really, we won that one on the back of the, the Flesh Gorgers, though. To be honest. Like, we didn't win that because of our crazy combos. We just ramped and played our big creature. But yeah, so far, so good. I guess we'll play, like, another four or five games with this. And then we'll try out another deck. I, honestly, I wasn't expecting this to work like this, y'all. Like, being serious. I thought this was just going to be fun. I get on here, goof around, and we might win two or three games doing something silly. But this actually is working. Even on hands that don't look great. So, like, I'm I'm kind of kind of digging it. And this is coming from somebody that doesn't ever play alchemy. So, yeah, I'm, I'm about it. Uh, let me get caught up on conversation here while that's happening. We got Halfling Stomper and the opening hand really helps the deck ramp and win on turn five or six. Yeah, exactly. That Halfling's really, really good. Uh, dun, 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 dun. The Luring set in standard? No, it is not in standard. Why does the title say standard? I was pretty sure. It, it, it's not standard. It's standard. Like, I can just change the title. It's not a big deal. It is not standard. Y'all Y'all worry too much. Just have some fun. Come hang out. <laughs> people are sticklers about everything no it's fine i feel you it's not difficult to go and just make change there we go refresh and you should have a, a happier title for you there you go everybody should be all good <laughs> But even more mono red might have some play in the set. Uh, you know, I think mono red is fine, right? Like it's it's easy to play, and a lot of people play it. But it's really not that difficult to beat if you want to target it to beat it. Like I've played a lot of decks recently that still beat mono red. Like sometimes it's a coin flip because mono red can get crazy draws. You know, I think that's fine. But I do think decks like that should exist just for balance purposes. Like you need something that can put pressure on all the quirky decks or whatever. Otherwise, we just have like this whole 
mid-rangey control super slow world and you don't necessarily want that all right we found an opponent delmo oh yeah we're definitely keeping this i mean i say that we need the delighted halfling not to die would be great and so we can just go right into uh topiary stomper it survives oh wait what is this guy Goblin Trap Finder, seek a... Oh, when it dies. Seek a card of mana value three or less. The card is petrally... Okay, cool, cool, cool. Got it. Um, Yeah, we're just going to go Topiary Stomper here. Oh, wait, I can't. Because that can't make... Oh, no, I forgot. It only makes any color for legends and colorless otherwise. Dang it. I needed to play the Forsaken Crossroads to cast a Topiary Stomper. That's completely my fault. Even though the new cards, we got to read the cards, folks. We got to read the cards. All right. Now I'll do what I was trying to do. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five. This is six. Topiary Stomper is seven. All right. If they don't kill our creatures, you know what? You get to hang out there, Atali. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. Okay. Cool, cool. All right. We'll just... Oh, no. That'd make the other thing. Cool. Do I like mono green and what's my favorite mono color? Uh, I mean, mono green's fine. I mean, all the mono colors are fine. I don't know if I have one that's like my preferred. I guess I would say green. But I'm the worst about like hot takes. I mean, I have so many people that I think you people expect creators to have hot takes and I don't have a ton of them. <laughs> Just not my brand, I guess. Exile top card of your library. Battle cry goblin. Is that till the end of your next turn? You're going to play the card this turn. Okay, that's cool. So that's good news, I guess. All right, so they wasted a bunch of cards there. We love to see that. All right, go get our land. We'll just play this straight up. All right, no attacks. Here's open. We survived the turn. Because there's a double striker, and who knows what else is going to happen here. Oh, gosh. They all get plus one and double strike? Gee, bus. Two, four, five, six. That's 12. Oh, no. Mmm. That sucks. This is the problem with Topiary Stomper. Plus, I played this all wrong. I could have already had a, a tally down. So, I goofed this up multiple times. So, yeah. I deserve whatever happens here. I brought this upon myself. <laughs> all right and then they get a pile of cards i mean i think we're just dead right unless atali hits something fantastic that's two four six seven eight we can't play portal yet but we just got atali and hope for the best Maybe a burn spell in there. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got we got the Hugh the Entwood, y'all. All right. We're definitely gambling. We're going all in. F it, Topiary Stomper. You're never going to get to block. Sorry, friend. We're, we're here to play the whack. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that sucks. That sucks. Oh, no. That was as bad as it could have been. Oh, we're dead. <laughs> we are so dead. Oh my gosh. Yeah, all right, no attacks. Oh, that was awful. It finally got us, y'all. It finally got us. Yep, we're dead. Good job, opponent. To be fair, though, I think we could have won that if I would have played it correctly. If I would have just got, like, the turn two stomper, we could have had a tally the turn before that. Like, I goofed that all up. So, that one's on me. I'm not going to blame the deck for that one for doing a bad job, because I messed that up. That's totally my fault. I mean, we could have actually cast two Atali's that game. 
and and I messed up bad. That's what I get for, for not reading cards like I should. And not even not reading. Like, I knew. I just needed to slow down. Like, I played with the Delighted Halfling a little bit last weekend, so I already knew better. Okay, this is definitely a mulligan. This is probably fine. Let's keep this scrap the Titan. And I think that's good enough. So yeah, let's just do that. Mmm, another Forsaken Crossroads. Okay. Well, that's a little bit unfortunate. I'm going to do this with the idea that we could put a Forsaken Crossroads away if we have to target something and then just play this for two next turn if we get lucky. But it looks like that's not going to even be an option for us. So sadly, I just have to pass. Though we already have five mana now for Hugh the Entwood, so that's kind of cool. We'll see if it works. Uh, yeah, we'll kill a token. Why not? And we will get rid of one of these. Oh, Titan. Let's do this. We will call green and just untap it. One, two, three, four. Well, we're going to shuffle that anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, mm, 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 mm. And we'll get yet another forest since we have Titan in hand. And I think we Topiary Stomper first. And then we'll see if we get another land. Then we might Titan. Otherwise, we'll just Hew the Entwood the following turn. That's kind of like a land. <laughs> it, it's sort of a land. Uh-oh. Oh, they're going to big score. What are they going for? Are they trying to go equally big? Uh, okay. And might as well attack? Alright, let's see what's up. I mean, they might play their own, oh, they say a portal, but they're not quite there. They could destroy all creatures and generate a treasure. Professional face breaker, alright. Okay, now we have a decision to make, y'all. I'm going to let chat decide. Are we going to go Titan? Or are we going to go Hugh the Entwood? I think I know y'all's answer. Y'all want to see the Entwood go off, right? Because <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Three, six, seven. That's a lot. That's a lot of options. It means Topiary Stomper doesn't get to do anything. But I think that's okay. I think that's what we're doing. All right. We're in. I'm, I'm going for the Hugh the Entwood. Here we go. Uh, I'm also going to tap for extra mana. We're going to get red. Red. I don't know if we actually need it. We probably don't. But these are all going away. Here we go. Going to get rid of all of it. Hoping for the best. Okay, we at least got a portal out of the exchange. So that's not the worst thing. Uh, we'll call green with that since we're still holding the Titan. Uh, order triggers doesn't really matter. We will keep that land on top because we'll need that for Titan eventually. And uh, we're just going to attack for three. All right. We might be stealing a professional face breaker if we get lucky here. All right. Turning those into some 1-1s, one which... Probably... Oh, no! Oh, we definitely need to cast a Titan, like, ASAP. Oh, gosh. That's gonna suck. One, two, three, four, five, six. We need to, we need to draw land off the top. <laughs> is what we need. Uh, yeah, I don't even want to attack. We need to block these little 1-1s. One that sucks. Actually, I guess we're not blocking with the Halfling, because we want to be able to cast a Titan. We might die here, if they have the right cards. Ooh, that sucks. That sucks a lot, actually. Oh, that was not great for us. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we have Cultivator. Hmm. I'm going to get this so we can go get a land.
All right, hey, that kind of sort of worked. All right. And then two, four, six, seven. We got to call Kill City on fire. We just can't win, right? What the hell? He just did 21 straight up. That's great. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> uh, that one, they just got me. They just got me. Good job by the opponent. I ain't even mad at it. Oh, man. That was a good one. Not sure I would recommend playing that, but their deck did exactly what they wanted to do. So, congratulations. Can't even be mad at it. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. All right, let's see what we can do. Let's get back on the winning side of things. We will keep... Ooh, actually, are we? You know what? I'll gamble. Let's keep this. We have enough ways to search out lands and stuff. I'm, I'm going to think positive, and we're going to make this work. Oh, I just realized. You know what would have been cool? If it made, like, chomping sounds and you could... Oh, it does! I was about to say, if it makes chomping sounds, you get to eat the little food. But you, you can click the thing and you eat the food off the little bowl. That's cool. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so pleased by the simplest things. It's so funny. That is fantastic. Um, I think we just attack. Because why not? And then we'll just do this and leave mana up for volcanic spites. I don't know that we need it, but we'll see. Ossification, no! Okay, that's fine. Somebody wanted to play unfun cards. I could have got my thing back, but I didn't want to give them land there. All right, let's call. Ooh, I guess I have to call red. Oh, that sucks, actually. All right, call red. And, ooh, you can go to the bottom, buddy. We need some mana here. Pass the turn. Thalia, oh, yeah. well, I guess I should untap that land, huh? Okay. We'll pass here. I was just thinking, like, if we wanted to, like, do we just hew the Entwood next turn? <laughs> Because I don't know that we do, but I'm kind of interested in it. Frodo, whenever he enters the battlefield or attacks, you can attach an equipment card from it, value 2 or 3 to Frodo. As long as it's your turn, prevent all damage that would be dealt to Frodo. Well, that means we're not going to get to kill Frodo anyway, so let's just kill this. We will put back Titan, I'm pretty sure, is all we're doing here. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see if we can scry and find something good on top. I mean, it's a seventh land. That's not the worst thing. All right. If Atali's our plan, I kind of got to roll with it. We're not going to hew the Entwood. We made us use this and not even put a card back on it. Oh, no! Why? Uh, by the way, I had to kill the volcanic or kill the Frodo on our turn, actually. Well, we might just be on Hugh the Entwood instead. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna leave us the option. How kind of them. They know we can still play this for four mana, right? Okay. Yeah, I definitely would have taken one of our other cards. It seems a little bit surprising, honestly. I guess I don't want them to know I have the seventh land yet to play Atali, so we probably just do this. I mean, our little duder can stay under there, and we'll just kill Frodo. Uh, decline. We don't want to put anything away right now. We, we like this hand. Kimba, so this is an equipment deck. They just didn't get their equipment cards out. Oh, why were you not one card lower? Dang it. <laughs> uh, that can... 
Oh, I hit the scry and said, wait, what? Did I even choose? Oh, that sucks. All right, well, I would have rather played Atali here, but things being what they are, we're just going to go... Hey, we're not. We're not. Opponent's stuck on land. We're just going to play Atali next turn. I mean, opponent can do it. Yeah, they're just saying GG's. They didn't draw anything. Yeah, that game wasn't that fun. That's tough. You should have went the other way with the Titan on the last game. Yeah, uh, of course. Like, But yeah, we're just playing big cards. We're going for the bigger play. I'm not trying to win every single game. We're trying to play the fun cards. That's the whole purpose of playing today. Showcasing new Lord of the Rings cards. Alright, let's see if we can find another opponent. Like I said, we'll play a few more games, maybe three more games with this, and then we'll move on to something else. Oh, you can only untap the crossroads if you were on the draw. That is true. That is true. Oh, come on. I think I have to clear the queue and get back in. Sometimes that happens in Arena. I also think we have a few, a fewer number of people playing today. Because there's a lot of people that do, like, historic or standard content. And they don't play Alchemy, so they're not messing with this. So I think some of them passed on it. Which I understand. Because it took a little while to go through deck lists and online and see if I can fix them up or whatever. Because I don't normally know the cards. Mm, 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 mm. All right, well, I guess we'll just wait. <laughs> we'll wait and see who shows up. Also, thank you for those of you who just showed up. If you got here late, let me know where you're from. I'm curious where everybody's watching the stream from today. Hey, MTG Malone, my bud. Uh, however, this hand's real bad. Uh, but yeah, y'all are right. Whenever we're not on the play, you cannot untap the Forsaken Crossroads. That does make a difference. Uh, what are we going to do here? We're definitely keeping this. I think we just get rid of Topiary Stomper. Because we can't really cast anything here on turn one, no matter what we do. So we're better off. No matter what, we're only playing... Well, that's not true. We'll do this first, because there is a chance that we could just cast this for two next turn. And we will get to cast that... Oh, no, we won't, because, again, this comes into play tapped. Duh. Uh, we will make it green mana, though, because that's kind of all we have available. We do? Maybe we do want that. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. We'll take that. Because we can play Cultivator. Oh, no, we can't. Uh, I guess we just play Topiary Stomper next turn. Fall of Gil Gilgalad. Scry 2. Put a plus one, plus one count. Okay, so they're doing the Scry thing. One top, one bottom. Good to know. Let's go with this. We will get... I'm going to say a mountain. Don't know that I desperately need it, because I do have... Actually, I probably don't, because I have another backup halfling, too, if I need to cast an Atali. Oh, Gwenna's on the scene. This is going to get rough. We can kill a Gwenna, though. One, two, three, four. This gets five. This is six. All right, this is actually not bad how this works out. We can do this. Go get a land. And then I can tap this for colorless so Arena can't wreck us. Kill this. Decline to put anything back because we want all of our stuff here, obviously. Take a point. Go to 19. Pass the turn. And now we have seven mana for a big titan. That's pretty good considering we couldn't play a turn one delighted halfling here. Okay. We're going big. Gonna put get a four-four. Put a shield counter on Titan. Play this. 
And uh, no point in attacking there. All right, opponent's got mana. What do they do? They are also just going to untap. So now they have access to six if they need it. That's that's a good thing. Could have put a plus one on target creature or make a treasure. They are making a treasure. Yep, every time you scry, I like that card. Oh, man. Um, if we just do this for four, we're left with a Titan. If we do this for three... We're left with Titan this, but then they could block and... Uh, <laughs> what do we do with this? I feel like we're... Uh, God, this is so difficult. And the opponent ends up with cards where we have none if we do that. God, this is tough. This is whenever it attacks or enters the battlefield. Put a plus one on another creature, create a food, create a treasure. I mean, all right. I guess we just do it for three and gamble. I think that's the correct thing to do here. Like, I hate it, but probably right. And then we just hold the Titan so we don't lose it. Oh, wait, the Titan had a shield that prevented the first three. Ah, I forgot. I was thinking it took the three but didn't die. Yeah, I could have got in for extra damage there. If I lose, that's probably where I lost. That's a mistake. Yeah, because I definitely could have attacked for extra damage there. But, ah well. Kept one on top, put the other on the bottom. We did get a land so we can attack with the Topiary Stomper. Which we will do. Alright. Opponent's at 8. Let's find one of our big cards. Let's find it a tally. Let's find something. Here's a battlefield. Or, yeah, you get to scry one. Make a 4-4. Four, four. Makes sense. Here we go. This is what we're waiting for. Please don't counter. Oh, we're going to get to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right. We get to do all the things. Call green, I guess. Yep. Sure. <laughs> like, we'll just do it again. Make a treasure, attack for 7. All right. Glorfindel. And it looks like Titan's going to get it done. All right. Cool, cool. That was awesome. <laughs> Do I have enough ramp? We have a lot of ramp. <laughs> like, literally, the deck is like almost all ramp cards and then our big spells. So we have a lot. Uh, let me, let me go back. Actually, we'll play one more game, maybe two, and then we'll go back and, and look at the list, and I'll show you. But it's like, it's a lot of ramp spells. Like, pretty much every card makes mana or gets land. I don't know who this is. We will keep this. Can't quite hew the Antwood unless we draw a land over the next couple turns, but would be cool. But we can Delighted Halfling, play Topiary Stomper, probably just get a forest. That's one, two, three, four lands. So if we were to find it on tap one, we could play Hugh the Antwood because we won't be able to untap the crossroads. But that's okay, actually. I don't even know if we should be hewing the woods just because we can when we have five. Because you do increase the odds that you'll miss. Which is definitely not what you want. But it's also damn fun. Alright, let's get a forest. Let's see what we can do. Oh, is this the is it draw two maybe? 
Ah, they killed our halfling. That's okay. Ooh, ow. I just hit my elbow. I'm sure y'all heard that. Um, yeah, we'll play this. Call red, I guess, on this one. Ooh, I guess you can stay on top. Sure. And then we just pass. Yeah, I think... Yeah, we wouldn't have been able to gamble there. We would have been able to play, though, the Groundbreaker, which would have been kind of nice. Uh-oh. Opponent did not find land. Hmm. All right, we'll try to play this. See if they have a counter, because they probably do. Uh, what is this? Counter target creature spell. If it was legendary, the ring tempts you. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Fair enough. Sure. That works. So we're going to have to be dodging a lot of counters here, apparently. Because I'm assuming that's why they kept the hand. If you can't cast anything else. And they know we're obviously ramping, so they're not necessarily incentivized to try to go for anything. Hmm. Can't kill the small leg, sadly. That is a problem. Alright. We will get rid of this here. Crossroads. We will play this. Call red, I suppose. To replace the other one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, okay. I can stay on top. It lets us get in there with Topiary Stomper. Possibly they try to do something to it, and then we hew the Entwood. Is our working game plan. I have no idea if it's going to be successful, but that's what we're going to aim for. Go to attacks. See what the opponent's got waiting for us. Hmm. Hmm. All right. I think I'm just going to do this. If they have a counter, we'll probably see one of them here. Yeah. That's why I didn't want to go for the Hugh the Entwood there. I thought it was going to be a little bit bad. But I'm, I'm okay with it, actually. We really need them to just cast a thing so we can sneak this through, but they might just be playing a counter-heavy deck. Which, if so, is not great for us. But we need them to tap some mana so we can get one of these off. If they do, though, that's it. I, I think we'll put it away unless we just brick for seven cards. Okay, they're doing that for zero. All right. Okay. Oh, we never mind. We got an Atali. Let's see what the opponent's got over there. Oh, opponent says GG. All right, cool. Okay. Um, this one, we're calling a success. Thumbs up. The deck does big, dumb things. But let's review real quick what we do have available in this deck. Because uh, it worked way better than anticipated. Uh, no, I didn't take you as being insulting at all. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see what we got here. Going in, we're going to review the deck here. Do, 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 do. All right, so... Lots of ramp here, but really did everything we wanted to do. So four Delighted Halfling, four Volcanic Spite, which this is actually really good because it does let us get rid of... Like, if we have too many expensive cards in hand, it puts them back in the deck, which is kind of nice, and gets us something else. So we have four Topiary Stomper, three Forceful Cultivator, which worked out pretty well in here, two Foundry Groundbreaker, four Hugh the Entwood. This card is ridiculously fun. There's not much else I can say about this. Phyrex and Flesh Gorger, even though we can't actually cast the Flesh Gorger, it did work out and it was fine. Now, do we need four of them? I think that's debatable. But we ramp so much that 
I think there was only one time where we kind of had to hesitate on if we could even cast it. Uh, of course, Atali was great. No shocker there. The three Atali, two Titan of Industry. We didn't get to cast Last March of the Ants, and I was so sad because I really, 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 really wanted to cast this card. But it's okay. But I really did want to. I thought it would be cool if we got anywhere between four and seven cards. Just boom, and then put a bunch of stuff down. Especially if we got like a free Atali or a free Titan or something. That would have been so cool. But I still think it's cool having it in the list. But if you want to cut it and just play 60, that's fine. And then three portal to Frexia also was fantastic. Uh, you could even cut a march and play a portal, and that would make sense. And then two spiteful banditry. This is really just to buy us time against stuff like maybe goblins or something. But I think it only came up in one of our games. But it wasn't bad, though. Then we have two mountains, one Sakinzen, one Besaju, five forests, four each of Copperline Gorge, Carplusion Forest, for Rockfall Vale, four Forsaken Crossroads. Boom, ba doom, and that was that. The one thing I will say this, though, about the, the deck is that it was surprisingly consistent. Now, again, you're playing early access, so you're not going to run into some of the stuff you might run into normally in Alchemy. But this was actually still really, really, really good. So if you were only a starting point or you like playing ramp decks, decks, I think this could actually be worth doing. It does have a lot of rares and mythics in it, but a big chunk of them are ones that You've probably already crafted for something in Standard if you've been playing a lot, so that's the good news. There's some stuff like Delighted Halfling or whatever, but if you're going to be playing Alchemy or Historic, you're probably going to craft that anyway somewhere down the road, so I think that's fine too. But yeah, I kind of dig it, honestly. Overall, I'm into it. Yeah, if there's anything, I don't really have a card spotlight to go with this, but I think if I did... It would probably just be our silly Ents card, because I want that card to be so good. I'm trying to get some of these to put into Commander, truthfully. I think that's my whole thing. I think if you're wanting to play Commander, you want to do something big, especially late in the game, try to put stuff away, that's just such a cool card, and it can't be countered, which I like a lot. So, yeah, that's, that's my suggestion there. But otherwise, there's going to be a lot more to play today, so I think if you are watching this on YouTube after the fact... Well, there's going to be more of these with Lord of the Rings cards, so go check out the other videos. All right, so we got that recorded. I just impromptu decided to do a closer for it, so I hope that wasn't weird for y'all. <laughs> it's like y'all are watching a live recording of a video that will not be live later, but, you know. But y'all y'all kind of got to see it. I was just throwing it. I didn't even have a script for that. I just kind of did it. <laughs> but let's get back into Arena here, and let's check out another deck. Yeah, this is actually... I like. I, I am a little sad that these cards aren't in Standard, if I'm being real. Because the truth is, these cards could totally have been in Standard with no problem. Like, there's nothing that is so twisted or broken or whatever that, like, you just can't play them. Right, the ring thing could it is it a little bit complicated, like slightly, but it's even that's not bad. I think it's truly just because of them being a slightly more expensive booster. I think they want all standard legal boosters to just be like the four dollar booster or whatever. And since this one, I think is going to be like five U.S. dollars or five fifty or six something like in that ballpark between five and six dollars. Like they didn't want that to be a thing, but I think a lot of people would have enjoyed playing these cards in standard. Honestly, I think they would be totally good in standard and we have a good time with it. But I don't get to make that decision. That's on somebody else. Okay, so we did some things. Question is, do we want to try to play some Nazgul? I'm considering it because you get to play nine Nazgul, which, you know, kind of gets me going a little bit. And the other thing about Nazgul that I think people forgot is when you read them, they actually give their ability to other wraiths, not just to other Nazgul. And there is a Witch King, which happens to be a wraith, and there are ring wraiths that are also wraiths, which also double as removal, because they give something minus three, minus three, which is super nice. And you get a lot of opportunities for the ring to tempt you, which is cool, because if we're going to play it, we might as well have the option to do cool ring things. The other thing I want to see, too, is how it handles the artwork for the Nazgul, because there are nine different ones, so I'm curious if it's going to randomize, like, do you get a different picture of one every single time? Which is kind of cool. But other than that, we've got some Frodo, because, you know, 
you're playing black and white, and you can technically insta-kill your opponents with Frodo. I don't think we'll ever get to do it, but it would be awesome. Uh, Spirited Companion, Call the Ring. Juggernaut Peddler, which can get a card from the opponent's hand in exchange for giving them a Juggernaut. But, eh, what do you do? Uh, Boromir, which is pretty cool. If opponent casts a spell with no mana being spent on it. So if they do something for free, uh, you counter it. And then you can sacrifice it, give your creatures indestructible, which is pretty cool if we've taken the time to build up a bunch of Nazgul. Uh, Brutal Cathar, we all know what that is. We are playing an Elish Norn, because I think this card's just really cool and annoying if you're already doing a bunch of other stuff with the ring. Then we have Inquisitor Captain, which lets us get some free things, which is great, because some of those free things could be Nazgul, which will get a lot of triggers, which is awesome. Then we have Ratadrabix, because Ratadrabix is just, you know, legendaries. And then a bigger, El the other Elish Norn, which lets these trigger multiple times, which is super nice. And then we have the Witch King and the Ring Wraith. Uh, let's see. Rumert says, I wanted to try a Nazgul deck as soon as I saw it played at the PPR, and this deck looks sick, honestly. You know, I don't know if it is or not. Uh, I got this list from someone else. I wish I remembered who it was, so I'll try to give them credit when I do the video for it. I think I only changed, like, four cards. So this is somebody else's base deck, but I do actually like the direction that it's going. The only thing I question is the Juggernaut Peddler, because I feel like this could backfire, potentially. But got to take a chance, you know, if you want to get to do what you want to do. So let's hop in and play some with the Nazgul and see what we can do. I don't think these games are going to be as uh, explosive <laughs> as the other deck was, for sure. Hey, Levdev! I've used, I have one of his lists uh, later for the stream on uh, Twitch, I think. Oh, they didn't give us different Nazgul pictures. It's the same one. Man, that sucks. It's like a small thing, but I totally wanted it to be. Man. All right. Well, it is what it is. All right. Man, so bad. So bad. Okay, they're playing the Scry deck. We do need to draw land here so we can start getting these down with our Death Touchers. We did find land, so that's good news. We could level this up if we wanted to. Or we could play the Peddler. I don't think we want a Peddler here, so I might just level up Frodo. I think that's what we're going to do. And go get it. And then we can Nazgul, Nazgul, Boromir, probably, if I were guessing. The Walrus, which is more mana later. All right, and a Mirix. Let's go ahead and play this. And I think we start in on our Nazgul shenanigans here in a second. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Oh, I could have had the Ring Tempt Frodo, right? Yeah, I could have done that. That would have been smarter. Uh, the first level of the ring is your ring bearer is legendary and can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. So, yeah. You'll just keep Frodo only being blocked by small things. Oh, that's a cool way to denote who's got the ring. I like that. That's a cool effect. Elrond will not be blocking Frodo. Uh, yeah, we're going to go. Uh, we're still going to choose Frodo. We're going to give our duders some things. And, uh, yeah, we're attacking. Draw and discard. We will be discarding probably one of the Boromirs, because I don't think we need... Actually, you know what? We might want to sacrifice those later. Maybe we're just getting rid of the Peddler at this point. Yeah, Boromir can't block him. And if we can get another black mana... Oh, we need two more black mana. To uh, have Frodo... Whenever he deals combat damage... That player lose the game... If the ring tempted you... Four more times this game. Uh, we've already been tempted twice. Frodo is going to be a nuisance to the opponent. Which is our goal here. 
But if we can find more Nazgul, that's super cool too, because then they pump each other, and then we have a big pile of bad things. Though they are getting to put counters on stuff to be able to trade, so we may just Boromir up so our stuff doesn't die. Gladrill, which, uh, whenever the ring tempts you, you choose a creature. All right. Okay. You got it. We're just going to take five. Ooh, that doesn't suck. But not what we're going for here. We are going to attack four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They could block with a one, three. Yeah, that's fine. Ooh, nifty. Um, I guess we don't need Merix, huh? All right. Opponent's just taking it. Going to three. Let's see what happens. Man, this Frodo's going the distance. Showed up turn one and just kind of hung out. We're at 23, so I'm not too worried about it. And we can just play Elish Norn ultimately, right? And then the opponent is going to take damage whenever they block or whatever. Oh, if the opponent makes their creatures too big, nothing will be able to block Frodo. A two power can still block it. But once it becomes three, they can't. All right. Get to put some counters on things. Gladrill. Oh, you get to put a land in if there's a land on top. All right. So now that one can't block. Come on. Make the halfling too big and then see if we can find a swamp. We'll, we'll get the insta win with Frodo. They're not going to do it, though. There was a chance, but they're not going to do it. Uh, sure. 10 and 7. That's only 17. 18, because you scry here. Yeah, I don't think we're dead. I think we're good, right? I mean, who knows? They could have a thing that prevents damage or something here. I, don't, I haven't memorized all the new cards. Who the heck knows? What is that? Oh, they're casting it, whatever it is. Nope, they they thought about it and then didn't. Okay, so they're at three. They can block one and then do what? I mean, I guess we just cast this, right? Oh, I guess it's nothing. Okay, sure. All right, opponent says GG. Oh, well, yeah, that's fine, I guess. The other Boromir. All right, those bounce, and then we get the damage in. So score one for the bad guys. The Nazgul get one. You can also target yourself with the Peddler, which is narrow. Yeah, yeah that's true. We could. <laughs> so yeah, their deck did what it was supposed to. The downside for them is that we ultimately had Nazgul, and they didn't have a way to tap stuff down. Am um, I playing the Ring Tempt up? Uh, it's, I think it's a version of it. It's very similar. It might be your list, actually. I think I switched, like, six cards. I think. But the rest... Of, you know what I noticed, though? What's sad? Is they don't give you multiple pictures of the Nazgul. You just get the one image, which kind of sucks. I was hoping they'd have all nine pictures. Or even just one in your hand, and then when you cast it, it turns into another one. Like, that would be fine. So your opponent doesn't know the difference of the cards in your hand. Like, that would be cool. But yeah. But I play, ended up playing uh, the Ring Wraiths and something else. So there's more Wraiths in the deck that you could hit. Because I wanted to get, like, more out of the Nazgul if we could. And have more removal. Uh, What do we do here? We go first, huh? Alright, we'll keep it. This is probably going to be slow, but I think it's worth the gamble. Rummer, if I have to choose nine different art, that is so bad. Like, they should just give me the nine arts. <laughs> uh, let's see. This will be black, I suppose. Uh, we'll make it white. 
And yeah, you could hang out. Why not? We're not casting anything for a couple turns anyway. <laughs> oh, man. Though we are playing against Triple H CL VIP, so I might get uh, body slammed here. Or that being said, I guess I could get pedigreed. If the opponent gets mad. <laughs> hey, thanks for the game, Dev. All right. All right, we made it to where we wanted to be, at least. So that's a good start. So now it's, do we get rid of their thing, or do we just start making Ring Wraith? I think we start making Ring Wraith. Because if they ramp into something bigger, we can just Brutal Cathar, and I guess that's fine. All right. Creature chosen. Nazgul is a 2-3, holding the ring. Which is not the way the story's supposed to go, but hey. Sometimes the bad guys get a win. What is this? Oh, Mirror Box for Legends. That's cool. You don't get to see that card too often. Um, You know what? I think I'm going to do this and see if we can find a Ring Wraith. All right, sure. Wasn't quite a ring wraith. Uh, put one of them on the battlefield. I guess this guy. And then we just attack. Okay. That wasn't so exciting, but it also wasn't terrible. Aragorn. We will be getting rid of Aragorn. We do not like that. That is highly problematic. Let's remove Aragorn. Let's play this. Put it on white, I suppose. Frodo, I guess, is okay. Then we attack. Plus, all these Vigilance creatures are just hard for the opponents to push through, I think. Also, the Nazgul currently can't be blocked, but the Nazgul holding a ring... I mean, it can be blocked by this, but it can be blocked by bigger stuff. The Nazgul holding the ring, though, becomes bad because we actually make it bigger. But next turn, I mean, we could play another Nazgul if we want. We could play Radadrabix and Frodo, which is fine. Wizards Rockets. That lets them get different mana colors. They do have three mana open here, so we don't get to kind of run amok the way we want. Let's go with this. See if they have a counter for that first. No. Hmm. We will make... I guess the Nazgul don't really need to be the ring bearers, huh? We'll put that here. And we will attack. With this, this, and this. Hopefully they don't have a way to kill the Brutal Cathar. <laughs> Actually, might as well attack, right? Because if they have a way to kill Brutal Cathar, so be it. Then they just have it. Ooh, we did find another Nazgul, though. That's pretty sweet. Um, Ratted Rabbix. We, we only have Boromir as our legendary, so whatever. And we can sacrifice him if we have to. Well, alright. They didn't have anything. We got there anyway. Cool. All right, so Nazgul are just getting stuff done. Not not the way I thought that was going to go. It's interesting how Nazgul get progressively stronger, but worse at wearing the ring as you get more... Yeah, that is... I don't know if that's purposeful or just coincidental in the mechanics, but that is one of those things that you kind of go, shouldn't they get better? But that being said, I guess if they get big enough, they're just a real problem because they're big and have death touch. So you end up double blocking and losing all your creatures anyway. I guess that's a fair trade. Thank you for those who swung by today, all 60 plus of you that are here to watch the stream. We are playing some Lord of the Rings Early Access. Thanks to Wizards of the Coast for letting me be in the Early Access stuff. Uh, earlier, we did play a Gruul Ramp deck, which was... Pretty bonkers, honestly. It was pretty dang good. That's going to be fun to put together uh, in editing for a YouTube video. Uh, this one, though, so far, it plays very differently, but not bad. It's been fairly consistent, even with the slow start that game. 
So we'll see what happens. Uh, I need to cancel and hop back in. Also, for people wondering, you know, they've wondered how does early access work? It's they kind of reach out to different creators and stuff, and they invite you in to be part of it. And you get basically what they call a god account, where you get access to all the stuff, so you can make whatever decks you want for the day. There's a few rules. Obviously, they want us to highlight more Lord of the Rings cards and not, or whatever the set happens to be. Today, it's Lord of the Rings. Uh, we are only able to play draft, I believe, or sealed, possibly, and whatever the constructed format is. Normally, we would play standard, but since this isn't a standard legal set, we are playing uh, Alchemy today. But you will be able to play it in Alchemy and Historic, both once it goes live on Arena. Curve Go Blue, what's up, dude? Uh, yeah, let's keep it. I think we're going to set this to... Ooh, I don't even know. Let's see what land we draw, because I don't know if I want this to be black or white, because I like both these cards. I may actually play a Peddler, target myself, get rid of the other Peddlers, so I get a Juggernaut. <laughs> I think that's going to be... It's like the most inefficient Juggernaut, but it's a two-mana Juggernaut, so there's that. All right, let's... Oh boy, I feel like I'm choosing... I think I have to put this on black, though. Sort of what that feels like. Okay, I get another shieldred. You know what? I'll take that as a backup option. Just in case. Because I kind of... I mean, I guess I could also discard that instead of the peddler. And then if we don't get the right mana, that would be fine. So that would be an option. Yeah, I think we peddler and we get rid of one shieldred. I'm going to target myself. Get rid of that. And then we will just have a Juggernaut for the future. And then we will pedal their hand next. Oh man, we did not draw land. This this did not work out the way we wanted at all. Uh, dang it. Orcish Bow Masters. All right, so they deal one to it, then they block, kill it. Makes sense. All right, I guess we go with this. Sadly, have to give him a Juggernaut because we have to slow things down at this point. Ooh, the One Ring Oracle, which is annoying. Hmm. Hmm. Well, in your battlefield, Conjurer, you get a Midnight Clock. Don't love that. Oh, boy. This is going to be tough no matter what we do here, huh? All right. I guess I'll take the one thing they can play immediately. And try to buy us some time. All right. I mean, because we're not doing much else. Oh, that sucks. All right. Little peddler, you get to wear the ring. Kind of all we can do, really. It's very sad. That wasn't that impressive. All right, so they get their clock. And we get nothing. Oh, no. All right. There's not a lot we could do here. I tried to set ourselves up and give us some opportunities. Maybe we could be aggressive if we had the juggernaut, but... Ultimately, we got nothing. Yeah, we're going to be way too far behind now. Yeah, sure. I'll block. Why not? Okay. This is at least a land. We get to attack for four. You know what? Let's, let's try this. All right, that's what I was hoping to find was another Nazgul. Uh, actually, mm, putting Boromir into play is actually relevant, but let's go with this. All right. Okay, found another Wraith. That's good. Okay. 
Do our Nazgul... They get another turn after this, right? Oh, no. It says on the next one, I guess. No, it's actually... Draw a card piece into instead. Yeah. Take another turn after this one. Okay. We can cast another Nazgul, which makes those each plus one. We would also move the ring up another one. It becomes blocked. Creature sacrifices it. We may have to just try for Shielded or whatever. With them drawing the number of cards they are. If we can get an opening through. Don't know that we will. But we'll see what happens here. Alright. They're finally casting the Juggernaut. And I think this might just be Shielded time. Just double checking if there was anything else I wanted to do there, but I don't think there is. This has to be on white. And another. Actually, you know what? Having the ring wraith in hand. Maybe we want that. Try? Ah, it's not going to resolve, is it? Oh, it did. Random. Didn't think that was going to work. Okay. We get to draw and discard, so we know what's on top already. We will be getting rid of probably this other little Nazgul. Because we can just try casting Elish Norn next turn. Bowman, you'll get to kill something. Look at that. Yep. Sounds good. All right, that's a lot of tradesies happening, but I think we can live with that. Okay. Opponents at eight. Okay. Seek doesn't count as drawing, so that's that's like getting around drawing cards with Shieldred out. All right, putting another counter on the Midnight Clock. Though, if Midnight Clock goes off, then Shieldred will deal a lot of damage. So that's real. Also, if we can find another untapped land, we could just play this one straight up, which would be kind of nice. Oh, Shieldred dead? I would totally understand if it were. Oh, what? Oh, he's just going for it. Man, I love it. I I love the gamble. Like, seeing if you have an answer for Shieldred, just, you know, if you got it, you got it. Oh, another one ring. All right. Yep, I think we're good. Wow, that game started out really badly for us. I'm surprised it went the way it did. Yep, a lot of Shieldred triggers. Whew. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Might as well stack them up. Like, get max value. Okay. Have we lost with the Nazgul yet? I just realized that. We played some weird games. I thought we were going to lose that one, honestly. I really did. I wasn't happy with how I played it. And we got a little bit... Unlucky not getting our fourth land till like turn seven, I think it was. And it still still worked out. So, you know, there's that. Sometimes things just go our way. But the ring has actually been really good because in letting us draw extra cards, letting a creature get through for a few extra points when the opponent can't block it. So the ring tempting you really does have extra value in here. We haven't got it past three, but the games just haven't gone long enough where we needed to go past three. Partly because the Nazgul have been, you know, four fives or whatever. And that's a real problem for a lot of decks to deal with. So, yeah. So far, so good. Both decks have, have worked out well. I am happy with them. Oh, man. I guess what other cards, too, out of the set have while we're waiting for an opponent? Like, what have y'all wanted to see? Or what cards kind of got you interested? Because, I mean, obviously, there's a lot for a commander. I don't think that's even a question. I think there's a bunch that people are wanting to play for commander i mean i've got several that i want in commander decks 
but this has actually been uh, pretty entertaining. All right, me and Cobra go blue again. Well, okay. That's a thing. We will keep this. All right. Lots of Forsaken Crossroads being played today, and rightfully so. We are going to... Man, this is a little tough, because I could play Frodo, but then I can't really do anything with him. So I'm just going to do this and try to play Spirited Companion, get us some other cards, I think, is the better value here. And then next turn, we can try to Peddler. Hey, that's pretty good. I guess to kill our little dude. Makes plenty of sense. I'm into it. This is a much better start for CGB here. Oracle gonna get to do some shenanigans for some power nine. Gotta love it. Uh, what's the other thing? Is it just whenever it attacks, you scry one? Okay. Let's put this on white. And then we'll untap it. And I think we're just going to go with the Nazgul here, I believe. I think that's the plan. And then we try to set up some uh, Brutal Cathars, maybe. Not much else we're going to be doing. I mean, I guess we could Peddler and Frodo. I mean, that would be a thing. I don't even think I block here. That just feels like a... A trap. Yep, it would have definitely been a trap. Alright, they are definitely way out in front. We are way behind, obviously. So, what can we do here? We can play a Brutal Cathar and Frodo. Don't necessarily want to give them a... I mean, I guess if we give them a Juggernaut... They won't have the mana for it unless they just draw land, so that's real-ish. <laughs> Alright, we're going to play this. We are going to play this. Get rid of that. And I guess we attack. I don't love it, but it's a thing. And then I guess there's a chance they don't cast anything, but I can't imagine. Yeah, I was going to say, it would make a lot of sense for you to not cast anything. Alright. I mean, that's three damage whenever I draw a second card. So, drawing a card is now terrible for... Like, once we go up with the Nazgul... Oh, yeah, yeah, we're dead. <laughs> Alright, GG's. Yep, we're dead. Good job. They found an Ancestral Recall. Uh, that's the silly stuff that makes alchemy is so bad but hey you know what that's a good way to die i can't even be mad about it way to go <laughs> uh scurry oak plus rosie is fine but it's kind of like redundant in the decks that want it because there's already like other combos with it Uh, I will trust you that that's a song from one of the movies. I genuinely barely remember. any. If it wasn't, like, one of the big things, I don't remember much from the movies. And I, I barely remember anything from the books, to be honest. For whatever reason, Lord of the Rings just didn't stick with me like that. Like, I pretty much... It's one of those things, like, I enjoyed it when I went through it. But then once I was done, I was done. You know? I don't know why. It's just kind of the way my brain processed it. Oh, no. We can't keep this. This we have to mulligan. That did not get a lot better. That's unfortunate. Very, very sad. We'll keep it. We'll get rid of this. And pass. You know, Andarius... And, th and this isn't a shot at you, by the way. This is just general PSA for people. That everybody hops into streams and asks all the same question, like, how are the decks today? How is the format going? Blah, blah, blah. And, like, we're answering the same question, like, 30 times. 
<laughs> not anybody's fault. It's just one of those things that, but yeah, generally speaking, we're a lot of times going to have the same answers that like, nah, it's fine. You know, it's, it's magic cards. Uh, let's go ahead and go with this. See what the opponent's got in hand. They can have a juggernaut. I don't think their deck wants to be playing juggernauts. So let's see what's up. They have a Tamiyo Safekeeping. Creature you know, deals damage equal to its power to another target creature. Or All right, cool. This at least means, in theory, we could Brutal Cathar their creature. Which is what we're hoping for. Don't know that we're going to actually get to do that. But we're still going to try. That being said, I'm probably also just blocking here. Okay, now they're going to use their fight spell. Yep, all right, cool. Now we know we got clear runway. Now, admittedly, we're also going to take a pile of damage here. We're going to be at, what, six poison? Five? So, that is a problem to at least some extent, but we will do this. And that at least solves the problem temporarily. They can cast a Juggernaut now, though. Assuming they found a fourth land. All right. They did cast a spell, though, which matters. And they can get a non-human card with mana value. Oh, pff, really? Oh, uh, what are the odds? <laughs> All right, then. Fair enough. You got it. You got it. Okay. Looks like we're going to play a Nazgul, I think, is the game plan here. We will put the ring on... I don't even think it matters who gets the ring here, actually. Sure, you can have it, I suppose. And we'll attack. Alright. I mean, we're already at five poison, so it's a little bit of dangerous ground. But we're going to do the best we can here. I mean, the Juggernaut I gave them will eventually come back to haunt us. But we'll see. Maybe, maybe. Alright, there's a the Juggernaut. So we don't get attacked there, which is real nice. Uh, I think we just play this and scry, truthfully. I think is what we're aiming for here. Okay, another Nazgul. Not too bad. Not mad at that. Uh, this can't be... Oh, no. Yeah, it can't be blocked by a creature with greater power. So we can attack with that safely. Alright. Now, sadly, this is going to get to do a pile of damage. The backside of the battle is an 8-8, which is a real issue. But we will at least have Death Touchers. <laughs> I mean, so... Ugh, this is going to be dicey. Generally, against poison decks, you, your life total doesn't matter, but here it kind of really does matter. So, what do we want to do here? I feel like if we block with the Death Toucher... Alright, that seems okay, I guess. Then we at least force the opponent to use that to kill this if they want to keep the Juggernaut. And I'm kind of okay with that. Oh, they had an Infectious Bite too? Oh, that hurts. That sucks, honestly. That hurts a lot. Damn. Okay. Well, that uh, did not quite go the way we wanted that to go, unfortunately. Okay, I guess we go with this. And we're probably just going to attack with the Inquisitor. Just to draw and discard, hopefully. <laughs> like, that's kind of all that's going on here. Well, this didn't quite come together the way we wanted. Though, if we can find one of our big ring race, that would be pretty sweet. That is not those things. So that's real bad. <laughs> Alright. 
Probably just going to kill our Death Toucher here. Nope, they're going to get back their creature. Okay, well, we go to eight, and then we just die now. All right. Just target your own things, and we're dead. GG's. Yep, we saw that coming. No surprise. Yep, that hand did not come together for us. Does the ring pet have other effects? Uh, it, it shines and spins. I think that's all it does. If we find some spicy tech today, would non-standard videos be something on the channel? Standard is pretty fun, post bans, but you know. Uh, here's the problem, though. Generally, generally on my channel, non-standard decks just don't draw. And alchemy has a little more play, but explorer is the worst. Alchemy is like the second worst. And then it's like historic and standard. So if everybody watched my regulars, each of those videos, it would help a lot. But if my regulars don't watch those videos, so kind of have to do. I'm better off making a non-gameplay video in a lot of cases than I am making a gameplay non-standard video. If that makes sense. Uh, I am going to... Wow. Wow. I'm going to keep this and just see what happens. See if we can draw our way out of it. Oh, against aggro red. we That might be a mistake. Uh, uh, you know what? Sure. Like, maybe there's a chance we find an untapped white source and we can just have a... Oh, actually, no. I guess we... Or just an untapped source, period. We could at least have a life-linking Frodo. And that would matter. Yep. You got it. Okay, that's not the way we wanted to get life-linking Frodo, but... Okay, we pass. <laughs> like, we'll take it, but I, I ain't happy about it. Okay, is Frodo dead, is the question. Looks like the answer is yes. So, we'll try. See if the opponent responds. They don't. We will block this guy. All right, so we gained two. Those died. Oh, there was something they could play. I was hoping it wouldn't be anything they could play. We were just going to get the best out of the situation there. But uh, is what it is. We will try a Nazgul. And it's a 2-3. Could still die to most of their burn spells here, which is not great. Yep, knew that was a thing. They're going to get to see some extra cards from the Trap Finder. Oh, nope. That's tough. All right. Taking a lot of damage here. All right. Already at eight. Need something really good from this Inquisitor, Captain. That would have been good a while ago. But that's not going to help us here. Ooh. Nazgul or Boromir? What is better here? I mean, I guess... Uh, I mean, you're talking about a 2-3 versus a 3-4, but a 2-3 blocks most of those things. 2-3 to a 3-3. Yeah, all right. I guess we put the Nazgul in. Make you the ring bearer, I suppose. Uh, what is this? Goblins cost less. The beginner step conjure a random goblin. Okay, well, that's that's not good for us. It's just generally bad for business. All right. I guess we block, block, because that's all we can do. I mean, we're still at eight, so we didn't die. So there's that. We got to look at the positives. Yep, that dies. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. That Elish Norm would have been good a while ago. Uh, Alright, this is only a 5-3, sadly. This is a 3-5. But, uh, yeah, I mean, hmm... Do we just die? 
Uh, I guess we gotta try it. Man, I wanted to cast that. Maybe I'm supposed to. I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to cast this. Yeah, we're dead. All right, GG's. <laughs> like no blocks. Yeah, that hand did not come together for us. That was bad. Uh, I will happily not give a dime to this vandalization of Tolkien's work. Okay, you can also just leave. <laughs> like, I don't know why you're complaining to me. I'm not wizards. So, like, you're barking up the wrong tree. Everybody's welcome to spend their money how they want to spend it. Weird to show up to a stream about a thing you don't have anything to do with and then complain about not wanting to spend money on it. I don't get it. I'm sure for both of us, there's better things you could do with your time. Uh, yeah, let's keep this. Let's go. All right. Let's go ahead and run this out. We got three Nazgals. This should be interesting. All right. Man, Companion actually sucks with the those orc archers being out there. Like, that's not a good look for us at all. Let's put this on, I guess, black, since we have so many black spells. And we will definitely untap it so we can start casting Nazgul. Probably the only way this gets in, because it can't be blocked by things with greater power, sure. The slow attacks. Happy Thursday to you, Paul. A Balrog deck. I don't have one of those yet. Have I played with Aragorn? There's uh, multiple Aragorns, and I have not played with any of them yet today. Ooh, Markwood Bats, though, came down. Uh, I think we're just going to scry with this one. I'm going to put this one on white, and we're just going to scry. Five. Five? Okay, we go with Elishnorn next turn. And then we have multiple things with ETBs, so that's pretty good. So don't hate that. Let's go here. And keep it on the Spirited Companion. Race up. Attack. Draw on discard. We're going to be discarding probably Radadravix here. Alright. How much damage are we taking from Mirkwood Bats? Let's see. Alright, when a player casts their second spell each turn, you lose one life and create a treasure, which from the bats is going to cost us a point. Alright, cool. It's a thing to know. Hopefully, Elish Norn will turn off some ETBs from the opponents. Uh-oh. There's things they can do here. Alright, I'm going to try to just attack first here. To see if the opponent wants to try to kill a Nazgul, potentially. I don't know that they do, but, you know. Uh, we'll get rid of this peddler. It'd be good to see what's in their hand, but we're just going ham. We're going big. We're trying to get the ring wraith down. Alright. Looks like Elish Norn is probably going to be the thing that gets the go for the throat. Or whatever removal choice is here. Oh, no. Okay, they're sacrificing. Let's create some treasure. Makes sense. Deal a point to us. Elish Norn down. Alright, so that wasn't so bad. That could have been a lot worse. Now if we can find an untapped land, we'll have a ring race ready to go. Oh, that works. Boo. Boo. All right. Fortunately, I don't think we're dead yet here. We're at 14. They have a lot of damage to block being at 7. So we're probably okay. Oh, they're just coming with it. All right. Well, we got it either way, I guess. This time, though, we get to play Big Ring Wraiths. Because this is just absurd in size. And we kill this, so the opponent loses three life. And then we get to attack. Yep, 
All right, that worked. Now, I've seen an Aragorn across the table, and we dealt with it, but that was it. I probably won't build a deck with Aragorn. Like, the idea of the four-color deck doesn't do a lot for me, so I'm probably not... Like, it feels like one of those things more people are going to build around in Commander than actually play in, like, 60-card stuff. Balrog deck? I don't... I mean, I already saw... I died to a Balrog deck. Opponent played a... Whatever that thing is, Burn the City or whatever that does 3x damage, and then attacked with a Balrog. <laughs> like, like I mean, I didn't have a good hand that game, but still, they crushed us with it just the same. It's like, that's probably it. <laughs> I don't know what else, like, if somebody has a list, show me a list with the Balrog. I'll at least take a look at it. But y'all are asking me to do a lot of work to make play one card that probably isn't even that good, if I were guessing. Uh, here, let me, let me take a look. Let me see what Balrogs. I think there's only one, and then there's, like, the Balrogs... Lash or whip or whatever, and I think that's it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, there's two Balrogs. There's this one that's a 7 7. When a legendary creature enters the creature and opponent controls, dies. Put this on the bottom, which is not good because there's a lot of legendary stuff we're all playing with. So this one's, I mean, I guess if... I mean, even then, you can't kill your opponent's creatures or else you just lose your Balrog. Yeah, that one's not good. And then this one's a 7-mana one. It costs less for each permanent you sacrifice that turn. So if you're already playing this in a sacrifice deck, probably okay. Uh, can't be blocked except by legendary creatures. When it dies, destroy an artifact and opponent controls. Or a creature and opponent controls. So yeah, I don't think there's really... Like, honestly, I don't think this is... Either of these are things you build around. I think is the problem. Like, there's no... I can't think of a deck where I want, like, four Balrogs. If I were going to play... Like, the first one... This one I don't think is that great on its own. Like, meh. Like, just not feeling it. But this one... If I'm already playing, like, the... Witches, Oven, Cat, Devil, whatever deck then yeah, you can play like two Balrogs or whatever and cast this for probably like... Yeah, you probably could get turns where you cast this for four and then it's just a big 7-5 with haste that's hard to block and you can just end the game. So like a couple of copies in those lists makes sense. But probably not something I would want to build around. Because honestly, I don't even like the sacrifice decks, so I wouldn't even play those, to tell you the truth. I mean, I don't think you can in Standard right or Alchemy right now. You do that in Historic. But like, unless you're a commander and everyone sacks, it's hard to play cheap. Uh, like, there's decks where you have sacrifice effects. Check out the door. Whenever you attack, scry two, then you can reveal the top of your library if a creature... Oh, yeah, I saw this earlier. Sure, put it, on, put it onto the battlefield tapped and attacking until your next turn. It gains trample. If you control a dwarf and hexproof... Like, this is so much stuff. Until your next turn, it gains Trample if you control a Dwarf, and Hexproof if you control an Elf. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this is, like... Is this any better than just playing stuff that sacrifices so you can play the Balrog cheap? You know what I mean? Like, you're, you're still... Do, you're still spending other cards to do a thing to get the cheap creature. Though this card itself doesn't particularly do anything on its own, right? You still have to have other creatures, still have to have a reasonable attack, and this has to survive a turn. Or, I mean, not really. I guess you could do it with the turn you play it, but it's still five mana. No wings on the Balrog makes you sad. Ah, that's fair. Any dragons in the set? No, I don't think. I think there's... Oh, no, because Smaug actually appears on the uh, Saga... Because in the book, Smaug is just, like, a legend. I don't think he's actually... Like, in the movies we see him, I don't remember in the books if you actually see him as a character. And I think that's why they did it the way they did for this. It's like, he didn't actually get a card. But technically, there is a dragon. There's this thing, which is pseudo-dragon familiar, which is a 2-2 two, two for 3. There's a 3-2 for 4. Uh, is there anything else in this set that's a dragon? I don't think there is. Let me just put it on Lord of the Rings. Those aren't even in the set. No, it's just this. 
so yeah, this is there and back again. That's the only thing that even depicts Smaug as far as I know and makes a dragon token. So this is the only the only dragon. So, meh, no dragons really to speak of. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think the Balrog's fine. It's a cool card, but you probably just put it in a deck where you're already doing other things or already like ramping and then just hope you can punch through with it. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I, I remember him being in a storybook, but... And and by the way, since somebody's going to probably mention it in my comments, so, you know, I can just save this for a video. The people that wanted to be like, but this isn't historically accurate to the story. Neither were the movies. Like, Aragorn's supposed to have, like, gray eyes or something, and, like, Smaug isn't even a real thing, and Gimli became, like, comic relief instead of being this, like, super stoic poetic type person or whatever like so it, it's whatever you know like they're all interpretations of the work smog is part of the hobbit not lord of the rings meaning they probably do not have the rights to make him a card that, that might be true i mean honestly i don't know how the licensing works i was on a thing where we tried to work with the licensing for godzilla and it was super boring and complicated and problematic so i can only imagine the Tolkien estate is probably even harder to deal with the Lord of the Rings because it's worth probably even way more money than uh, Godzilla is. Especially after success of the movies and the TV shows and everything else. Like, I imagine everything had to be done a very specific way. So if they told you you can use something and you can't use something, there probably wasn't much room to debate it. You probably got stuck with whatever you're stuck with. Uh, Alright, opponents, where are you at? We need to get at least two more games in, and I think we can probably call it good on this one, but we'll see. But so far, it's actually kind of all right. I dig it. It's it's kind of fun. And I like the cards in this set. It's, it really is unfortunate that we won't be able to play with these in regular standard, because I do quite like them for standard. And more than anything, the thing that is kind of unfortunate is that we're going another summer without a standard legal set. So we don't get another standard set until September, which, eh, it's like, it's not exciting. You know what I mean? Like it, it, I would like to have had another set in the summer. I really liked having, even when it wasn't like a core set, we got something else in its place up until I guess two years ago. And then we just are repeating that again this year to not have a standard legal set, which I don't really know why. Cause honestly, even going back and looking at that Baldur's Gate or whatever, the, the second commander base set or whatever we got last season, the D&D &D set, last summer, we could have easily had that be a standard set. Like, if anything, that set was underpowered and could have very easily been a standard set. Except for the things that specifically were, like, commander-oriented. Could have been fine. Like, we could have just built that set to be standard legal and there would have been no issue with it. But we put a lot of stuff in there as far as, like, backgrounds and other things and really just seemed unnecessary but yeah I, I would rather i think you have a bigger chance of moving more cards if the set is standard legal than not and then if people want to play them in older formats they just can you know there's nothing stopping anybody but even designing them for for commander i've only seen one no it's not true i may have seen two people actually play with the backgrounds and stuff that were in those sets so i like it from a flavor standpoint for like D, &D you know that's pretty cool but otherwise eh. yeah i agree with you miguel like it, there was just fun cool things that would have been neat to play with and if you like D, &D it would have just scratched that itch and been even better you know so it just felt really weird to not to not have that it actually burned out from the rapid fire release of sets. I was actually looking forward to having a break. Oh, that makes sense too. That that does get to some people, and I totally understand that argument as well. I get it. And and the other thing too, and I think one thing people don't think about when we talk about all the different releases Wizards has, some of that is about understanding that Magic has, I don't know if you want to say like five or six different types of players. And not all those players are going to want every set, right? If somebody plays mostly competitive stuff and they play a lot of standard and they go to their local FNMs and they're trying to go to RCQs, well, they're going to want every standard set. 
they're not going to care about the commander specific stuff. You know, same thing if somebody plays Vintage or Legacy, the stuff in the commander decks and things matter to them, but they don't really care about most of the standard stuff because what are they going to want? Like one card out of each set, maybe two for the deck that they're playing or decks. So they'll just go buy those, right? So, you know, you also have like Modern Horizons and, you know, the different master set and those speak to different players trying to get reprints for their formats. So all that makes a difference, you know, and it's tough because... If you're in Wizard Shoes, you're trying to get some amount of money out of each of those player groups every year. Knowing that each of those groups is only going to really be interested in like two to four products. And they're not going to really care that much about the rest. Now, there are some people that are completists and want to get everything. And that's a whole different ball of wax. But I do kind of get it, you know. But let's see. Are we going to keep this? I think we are going to keep this. It's not a super strong hand. We might actually go Peddler early, unfortunately. But that might just be the best thing for us to be doing. And they went green on their land. Uh, I think we're going to play this on white. And we're just going to scry. And see if we find something. Ooh, we got the Call of the Ring finally. Alright, I'm going to keep it on top just so I get it. <laughs> like, even though I probably want some lands, this is fine. We at least get to do something with it. Let's... Uh, hmm. Do we want a Spirited Companion or do we want to just go for the Juggernaut Peddler here? I think we're going to go Spirited Companion. Okay, that's fine. And then we could do a three mana thing here, which looks like it's probably going to be a Ring Wraith. Or I say a Nazgul, not quite a Ring Wraith. It is a Wraith Knight, but not particularly a Ring Wraith. There is a difference. Spider. We... Oh, I was about to say we're going to remove a spider, but maybe we're not. Uh, yeah, we'll call white. Hmm. Yeah, I guess eh, we'll call black. Why not? And we'll untap it. We'll play this duder. And then we will attack with both of them. Why not? I mean, we have Death Touch on the Nazgul, so sure. We've got a lot of Death Touch going on, actually. And a little doggo carrying the ring. Oh, you can't block that 1-1. One, one. There you go. Oh, they don't want to trade. Maybe they do want to trade. Nope. They're trying to go back to the 1-1. One, one. They can't. There you go. All right. And if they have something crazy, we do have a Brutal Cathar next turn. If not, I think I'm going to try to get the Call of the Ring down. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not totally sure yet. This is the first Mono Green deck we've seen today, though. Oh, looks like Shielder is going to get to do some business. Oh, we get both of the cards we want anyway, so that's super nice. Let's get rid of that. And we're going to go ahead and play Call of the Ring. So during our upkeep, the ring tempts us. And if we choose a creature, we get to pay two life and draw a card. Which you kind of have to choose. So it's just you get to pay two life and draw a card if you want to. Opponent's only at nine. And this is a good setup here. We're going to be able to go to the third level on the ring if we want to. Uh, which, if it becomes blocked, it basically uh, has the Basilisk ability. So, if it gets blocked, it kills it. And whenever your Ring Bearer deals combat damage, each opponent loses three life. So, uh, yeah, this is not bad. Oh, we're going to fight or do something to Shieldred here. I would completely understand if you did. Nope. They might be trying to save a trick to kill our Brutal Cathar and then block Shieldred, if I were guessing. That would be a completely legit action. Um, however, if their plan is kill this and then double block, well, this would just kill those anyway. All right, I'm going to do this. 
and we'll just draw a card. Not really much reason to choose differently, I guess, here. I mean, we choose a Cathar, but Cathar is going to be one of the first things to die, I would assume, if they have some type of bite spell or something. A backup Ring Wraith. That doesn't do too much. We get two more life. All right, we could double Ring Wraith, though. That's cool, and then we get to do a free three damage. I'm down for that. I mean, as much as the Peddlers would be nice... Let's go. We're just going to get completely tempted and corrupted here. And yeah. Oh, I forgot. And we get another card. These are just free cards here with Shielded out. Because we get tempted, target, pay to, draw, lose to. So like, yeah, this is cool. This is just all bonus action. Yeah, to the point that we might as well attack with Brutal Cathar, because this is going to deal three, so they're at six. If they block the Cathar to be able to get back that, they would take four or five and then just die during their upkeep to Shieldred, so, eh? Sure. Like, this is crazy. This is so many cards, and it's just, they're just free. All right, cool. Let's go. I'm into it. So we maxed out the ring. And we found another Nazgul. All right, I don't even think we need this Spirited Companion anymore. Things have just gotten silly. Things have gotten out of control. Yeah, I'm assuming there was a fight spell or something here. A bite spell at the very least, but maybe not. This could just be it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Chris Zhu, thank you for the super chat. How's it going? It's going great today, actually. Having a great time, actually. Like, I really like the set. And I don't play that much alchemy, so it's been pretty cool getting to hop back in and play with a lot of these. So this is cool. All right, opponent's going to lose three, and that's going to be it. Yep, that does it. So, yeah, another win for the Ring Wraith. Uh, for some other time, you could try Arwen, Mortal Queen, and Goldberry bouncing around some indestructible tokens. I thought about it. Um, I don't know how beneficial that really is, because you have to have, like... You also have to have the creatures untapped and have mana and like, uh, so I don't know. You only play paper magic and you and your friends don't play any formats. We just put together what we think is fun. I really enjoy your content. I learned a lot about the game and playing mindful. Well, thank you so much, Patrick. Yeah, it's, it's something, and I talked about it in a recent video, that some people show up to the content like, ah, oh, why do you talk through all the stuff? Like, you talk too much, whatever. But that's literally the point of why I do my content the way I do. Like, I'm not going after the utmost competitive players, though I do think I present some decks and ideas that could help competitive players. I'm generally going after the, almost what I would just call the mid-tier players, right? The people that are stepping in, trying to learn a little bit more, the people that maybe are just trying to get better, so, you know, maybe they can finish in the money, get some prizes or something at their local RCQ or whatever, right? That's, that's kind of that range of players generally I'm going for. Now, I am making, or I'm hoping to, crossing my fingers, getting to work with an editor or two so I could do some more things for beginner players. Kind of like the recent video you saw where I was doing the different color combinations so people have a reference. I want to do one for, like, this is terminology in Magic. This is what the difference between, like, aggro and, and control or whatever it looks like. You know, things like that. So we just have, like, this whole base of stuff. So if somebody starts playing, it's like, hey, here's a playlist of a bunch of five to eight minute videos that can give you all the information you want because i feel like there's a lot of stuff out there for magic that's how to play magic but there's not a lot that goes like it's how to play magic and then there's deep strategy right but there's not a lot in the middle so i want to kind of fill that out if i can for people and i have an idea for probably six to eight videos still to do 
and fill that gap. And I think that could be really good for folks. The problem is they're not going to make a bunch of money. I mean, I don't expect them to get a ton of views, but I think over time they will get a few views each week, you know, 10 or 15 here or there. So, you know, in a year or two, it maybe adds up, but on an immediate day-to-day -day basis, there's not going to be a lot of return on them. So like, that's the hard part trying to figure out if I can even have an editor work with me to get those done. But, you know, just part of the creative process. I'm going to mulligan this and keep this and get rid of a plane so we can keep both Nazgul because I'm greedy. Uh-oh, first Skrull we've seen today. Fortunately, Frodo can fight a Skrull. Oh, Giada. Uh-oh. This feels like somebody who's not playing a lot of new cards. They're just going for it. All right. No attacks. All right, well, I guess we'll just see if Nazgul can outrace them. I don't really know. Nope, they have a Frodo. So they're, oh, they're doing Legends. Spells cast from amongst cards you drew this turn cost one less to cast. Spells cast from among cards your opponent drew this turn cost one more to cast. Well, that's fair. I just drew a land, so that doesn't really matter. Let's attack. Hmm. I'm not going to. I was going to attack with Frodo, but then I changed my mind. This guy's double strike. Bleh. Um. Okay. I'm just going to put that there for now. I don't really know what else I'm going to do with it. He's just going to hang out with it. <laughs> Didn't have a good good reason. He just has it. All right. I remember that guy. Tap a thing. Get a copy. Tap a thing. Nope. Doesn't do that anymore, huh? Oh, well, there's another one. Well, there you go. Yeah, I don't even know if I can include this matchup in the video unless I do something cool because the opponent really just played Frodo. All right. Well, that other Frodo we're not going to do much with, so that's whatever. We are going to play this, put it on white. We are going to scry and see if we find something good. That is not good, so we can go away. <laughs> All right, the ring tempts us. Put it back on the dog. Those grow a little bit. We attack for one. Actually, maybe don't even attack. I mean, I do get to draw and discard, I guess. That could be something. Yeah, Brutal Cathar is pretty nice. Let's get rid of this other Frodo. All right, let's see what we can do here. We're definitely going to still take two from Giada, possibly more, because... Oh, gosh. All right. What does that find? All right. Another Evangel. Sure. All right. Everything's coming in. I mean, Frodo's blocking here. Probably going to block one of the Evangels one way or the other. Fortunately, I do have black and white creatures, so we don't get completely blown out by Skrelv here, but we're going to take no less than, what to look like, six, seven minimum. So it's going to be kind of tough. All right, Frodo's coming to get it. Uh, protection from black? Sure. Uh, we can just block. Oh, we can't block. We can block Frodo, but not kill it. Fair. Um... Two, three, four. That's a, but they're not even moving up the ring, so we don't care that much. All right, that's fine. All right, we're at eight. Ooh, that would have been nice a while ago. <laughs> Doesn't really do anything now. Uh, I guess we could do this. Choose nothing. Man, this is rough, because I have to get rid of Giada. I want to get rid of Skrelv. But the truth is, we do have black and white creatures, so Skrelv doesn't really do a whole lot. If I leave one of each back and keep myself protected. 
Uh, sure, I'll just look at the opponent's hand. Um, we can draw and discard just to see, but the truth is if we get a land, we would want that... Oh no, because this would cost five next turns. Yeah, we're better off blocking. It's not even worth doing anything there. This should buy us enough time, though, hopefully. Oh, looks like they found a removal card, sadly. But let's see. I don't know. Let's find out. All right. Scrove's going to make that black. Sure. Like, we know that's a thing. I will block here. Yeah. It's not worth letting it through and going to six. All right. Though I would have tied up their mana, I suppose, for a turn. All right, Brutal Cathar dead. No, we got to flip the Cathar. Interesting. Okay, we're not mad at that, actually. That's, that's not a bad thing. And now we have an additionally a red creature, which matters. Alright, so we attack with the four or five. They could block with these two. We would kill both of them. And then they just have a bunch of one power things. We could also just attack with the brutes. That's kind of nice. And yeah. I mean, sure. We're only at eight, so there's probably some stupid way I die here. But, you know, got to risk it for the biscuit. But yeah, somebody wanted to... Man, I'm sure y'all can hear, like, the neighbor's lawn. I am so sorry. But yeah, there's the ring whenever you click it. It just, like, shines and flips or whatever. Uh, sure. That's fine. They'll get you out of back. That works. It sounds like a plan. Do, 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 do. And then they take four. All right. In the turn. Let's see if something good happens for us. Man, if we can get one of our things that... Like the big ring wraiths. That could kill a thing. That'd be so good. We get to kill two things. Frodo. You can attach equipment. Alright. We go to six. Come on, big ring wraiths. That's what we want right now. Eh, another Nazgul ain't bad, I guess. Oh, and we actually get to go up twice on this. Ooh. That's a thing. So the ring tempts us. Make one of these saucy, I guess. You know what? I could also choose the Peddler to be the ring bearer. No, but it could be blocked by Frodo right now. So that's not any good. There's combinations there that are pretty spicy, but... Alright. Okay. I mean... You gots to block, I guess. Attack with the 10 ball. And then we're still protected from... Skrelv, sort of. If we attack with Shieldred, they could block, and that gets kind of ugly, and we possibly die. Because they could chump block Shieldred, then you chump block that. You'd still, we still have two blockers. Ugh, I feel like I'm supposed to attack with two of these, but I'm not going to. Yep, they gained some life. Could make that indestructible, which it looks like they're probably going to here. Sure. All right. Ooh, you know what we need? We need the big uh, Wraith King, Witch King, or whatever. That's what we need here. That would be good. I should have put it on that, though, so I could draw and discard this thing, which would have been a big deal. What does this even do? At the beginning of your end step, remove a hope counter. If you do, you draw a card. Then if it has nothing on there, you gain four life. Okay. Makes sense. All right, we're down to four. 
Come on, deck. Help us out. That, all right, kind of does a thing. <laughs> Not really what we were looking for, but, you know, two cards doesn't hurt. Ooh, ooh, that, oh, man. That could have been great. Dang it. All right, let's see what we can find here. Oh, another Brutal Cathar would have been good. Uh, yeah, this has to go, I guess. Well, maybe just the Shattered Sanctum goes. Trying to think, though. One, two, three, four. I mean... I want to get rid of Ratted Rabbix because I want to be able to play Shield Red and something next turn, possibly. But I think we're still dead here, potentially. Opponent's at five. Because, like, we can only block... One, two, three, four things, realistically. I'm assuming they have a way to get rid of one of these. Man, I need a Spirited Companion to draw cards behind Shieldred. Oh, no, no, we'll get at least one from the Nazgulls. So we will gain two at a minimum from that. Okay, that's a good move from the opponents. So you gain two life from Frodo. Makes a lot of sense. Don't hate that. All right. Okay. A backup Frodo. Sure. Okay. All right. Oh, we got there. We at least have the blocker now, but we can't. We have to shield it first, right? That that just feels like absolutely necessary. Sadly. Much as I want to do this. I think this is imperative here. Though I could have held on to that land for a second. Okay, what do we do here? We attack with both. We get to draw a discard. We go to four. We have white and black creatures to block with. Assuming you protect one. They could still gain more life from Frodo. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. That's getting through anyway. All right. I guess we're getting in there with two of them. I'm just seeing what's up. Ooh, another Nazgul. Not quite good enough, though. All right. Uh-oh. What's that card in hand? We don't like that. We definitely don't like that. Also, they could get another angel or uh, evangel and tap some. Oh, all their evangel. Well, they got extra ones. I can't tell how many. They I think they only played three actual ones. So they should still have another. I mean, you got to block something, opponent. Because they're lethal. I think what they're trying to decide, though, is like if they block... With what, and do you, do you block with something like Frodo where you can use your Plaza of Heroes? Which is legit. Plus, there's a chance I could have a useful card in hand since you saw me get rid of another Nazgul. Alright. So what are we doing? We're going to protect the small Frodo. Alright. And then, hopefully we're not dead. <laughs> That's kind of all we're doing here. Like, I probably could have attacked with Elish Norn there, to be honest. That doesn't have an ETB, so that's good. Since we didn't attack with Elish Norn, that doesn't do anything. So now the opponent's on total blocking duty when we attack. All right. They lose two. Got another Nazgul, which is pretty funny. All right. One more creature deal combat damage to you. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. Discard a card. This gains indestructible, and I tap it. That sounds great. We at least have a blocker for Giada. We are going to attack with this, this, and the other Nazgul, I think, is fine. Probably even this 2-2 two -two Duder, because the opponent's at 3, so... You got to do something here.
not putting Elish Norn at risk because there are things like this and like the Evangel that are turned off as long as we have Elish Norn. So I don't want to put... Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Uh, sorry, Nazgul. You got to go. All right, so now we're at six. So we have a little more wiggle room. Yep, Frodo's going to juice up to be able to gain some life. All right. We could also kill Frodo so they don't get to gain life. Which would be a thing. Alright, do we care about these? I mean, it's a chance... I mean, they gain two... Nah, we just hold this. Because we also just kill Giada when it attacks. That's fine. Opponent's at three. I think we're okay. I could have probably gotten away attacking with everything. But... Felt a little unnecessarily risky for no reason. Which is, you know, what unnecessary means. Alright. Opponent goes to three. I think we're in good shape here. That gives your creatures a bonus. I think we're going to survive that okay. Yep. You get that. And we're going to try to target it. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Nope, 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 nope. Can't, because this gives them hexproof. But it didn't matter. Yeah, it had hexproof from the flowering of the white tree, so I wasn't actually able to use the Iganjo. But I would have went down to two, and then they definitely can't stop all that damage. So, yeah, good comeback there, because we were falling behind pretty, pretty big in that one. <laughs> you want to see him counter stack? Okay, let me get caught up on the conversation here. Uh, listening to your thoughts has really helped me play better and smarter. Well, that's good. That's good. That's really what I'm hoping for people. Like I said, for, you know, a lot of people don't want to admit that they're a beginner player, mid-tier player. And honestly, I would tell you this. I think most of the players who play competitively are not as good as they think they are. You know, and they could really brush up on some basics and learn some things from watching a lot of stuff. I even think you should be watching content of decks that don't work because I think that helps you be a better deck builder too and saves you a lot of time. But people don't want to see that. They just want to see decks working. But I do think there is something to be learned uh, in those cases. Uh, LFG, early access. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, we played CGB twice. Are these Lord of the Rings cards going to be in standard? No, they're not going to be in standard, unfortunately. Uh, Panic said the same thing. Have they played green-white humans? I haven't tried playing green-white humans yet. Uh... Let's see. Thick Nazgul. Yep, absolutely. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You're well aware I'm a slightly above average player at best. You have helped me improve my game immensely. You know, here's the thing, too. And being real, like, I used to be one of the players that I, I was qualified. Actually, back when they had rankings, I was very high ranked and qualified for Pro Tours, but I didn't go because I was running a business or I had other obligations for a long time. But I did go to all, like, the regional cash tournaments and stuff that were going on and did fairly well at those. Did well in qualifiers. But I was also playing Magic competitively a lot, right? I was playing the same deck a lot, testing different matchups, working on sideboards, doing all those small things, right? I don't do that anymore. So when I show up to a RCQ lately, it's just, like, I'm going on basic history and information of things I just know about matchups and maybe something I read or somebody gave me some cliff notes or whatever, and that's what I'm running with. And sometimes I still do well, sometimes I don't. But I can't be as upset about it because I'm not putting in nearly as much time. I think a lot of the people who are upset a lot of times aren't putting in enough time. And even when they are, they're not putting in correct time. Right? Because think about this. Most people play game ones a lot when they're practicing. Right? Just stock decks as they are, deck against deck. But if you think about it, no less than 50% of your matchups are going to be played without sideboards in tournaments. Right? Even if all your matches are 2-0... Half your games are going to have sideboards. So half or more are going to include your sideboard every single tournament. But people don't spend time discussing, like, what cards are good or bad or why or, you know... Because everybody goes, oh, here's a sideboard guide from whatever. But the reality is you need to know even more than that. Because the variation of the opponent... Like, if I'm... Let's say I'm playing against Selesnya Enchantments, right? There's certain cards I want in or out. But if they're playing a version that plays Hallowed Haunting versus a version that's playing like Calyx and Audacity, 
that could be a different thing. Or even a version that's playing more exile enchantments and trying to take advantage of Weaver of Harmony or something, right? Like, all three of those I might want different sideboard cards for, depending. But you have to go through the effort to learn that and know that, other than just like, oh, I, it's this deck, I'll just sideboard these cards. Like, that's probably still going to be close, but that's the difference between getting you to the top eight and trying to secure a win, right? The better players are spending time on that stuff. Uh, do, 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 do. Joe K. Bollywood. How's it going? Man, Bollywood stuff is entertaining as hell, by the way. If y'all don't watch any of that, it's hilarious. By the way, I say hilarious. They're, they're those Indian dramas. Like, man, if y'all ever watching those where somebody gets shot or they're dying, or whatever, like the melodramatic acting is so entertaining. Uh, you brought it up on a video like three days ago, but I like the commentary. Very conversational and informative. Like learning along with the entertainment. Yeah, and, and that's good, Paul, because that's really what I'm trying to do. And I know it's going to cause it, like, that probably causes me to grow slower, but I'm getting a very specific audience and even the Discord. Everybody's very helpful getting each other information on decks and, you know, when people are having issues, giving them resources. Like, that's the community I want to build. And that's, you know, it's just going to be slower going. And I'm okay with that. Is this set only for alchemy? I can't remember. No, it's alchemy and historic. Panic says, I've been going through games thinking. How can I think through this like Power Dragon and how I can keep my cool like uh, C. Favoretto? I don't know who Favoretto is. Maybe I need to check out their stuff. Uh, what do you feel is the strongest card in the set and why is it Elf Cavern of Souls? I don't know what I think the most powerful card in the set is, but I actually don't think it's that card. Like, I don't know what it is, but I don't think it's that. You play in a homebrew league, that's cool. Uh, you used to be a dancer. Freestyle. Oh, that's cool. Your group plays vintage. Anything goes. Yeah, see, that's fun magic, though. Like, I always tell people, you should be playing whatever you and your community find fun at the end of the day. Right? I'm on the Commander Advisor group. Yes, there are certain cards that are banned or not or whatever. But make rules that work for your group. Now, understand that if you go to, like, a Command Fest or a Magic Con, like, everybody's generally going to be playing by the same rules. But when you're just at home playing with your four or five friends I'm like just do what you want to do it's the same way that if you played any online game and y'all want to change the difficulty level or have more villains or not have certain guns or some rules for your capture of the flag or whatever it is like just do it it's only y'all playing have as much fun as you want to have with it favoretto is exceptionally jolly and chill guy smart player too well that's good i may have to look them up there's so many creators i don't know from other areas so i want to i need to look them up later Matter of fact, he said his name is F or C Fabretto. Is that what you said it was? Yeah, okay. I'm going to make a note. I'm going to see if I can find them later. Because I don't know who they are. But there you go. You tell me your signpost, huh? Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a tough one. But let me go back and show, the, show this deck. So people want to check it out. The Nazgul deck. This actually worked out pretty well, too. I was pretty, pretty happy with this. The Gruel Ramp one was bonkers. But this one was actually just a good, steady deck. But we played three Frodo, three Spirited Companion. I should probably just clip this so I can have it for the YouTube video, huh? That'd be smarter. Save myself time later. Work smarter, not harder. <laughs> uh, all right, so three Frodo, three Spirited Companion, two Call of the Ring, three Juggernaut Peddler, two Boromir, four Brutal Cathar, nine Nazgul, which sadly all got the same picture. I really was hoping we get all nine pictures. One Elish Norn, three Inquisitor Captain, two Shieldred, the Apocalypse, one Dreaded Rabbix, one Elish Norn, one Witch King of Angmaw, and two Ring Wraiths. One Igonjo, four Plains, four Swamp, one Takanuma, four each of Caves of Korlo, Shattered Sanctum, Forsaken Crossroads, and two Merricks. The one thing I would say about that particular deck, though, is it has a lot of room to change, right? I don't think anything in it is even close to optimal. And I think ultimately, you have a lot of different choices with this set alone. If you want to go harder on the Nazgul Ring Wraith thing, I think that's possible. If you want to go heavy on like Legendary alongside the Ring Wraith, or if you just want to double down on things tempting you with the Ring, I think all of those are very viable. So all worth checking out for sure. But we will have a lot of other videos using Lord of the Rings. So if you want to check those out, I will be sure to link them so y'all can see those as well. All right, that's probably it. I'm probably not going to have a card spotlight on these because 
it's such a weird mix. Sorry y'all have to hear the lawnmower right now. I just realized, like, I think my neighbors are literally mowing right in the front as I'm streaming. <laughs> oh, no, they're pressure washing. That's what's going on. Okay, well, I can't complain. Pressure washing is actually kind of fun. <laughs> I need to do some more of that myself, honestly. But yeah, so this set so far, I mean, we've seen a lot of interesting stuff. And what I liked is our opponents also brought a lot of interesting things to the table, too. We saw a couple of people trying the Scry decks, which I'll probably play one of those later on uh, Twitch, if you want to check me out. We played the Ramp deck, the Nazgul black-white deck. We saw a crazy deck that went over the top with the Balrog and whatever, the City of Flame or whatever that thing is, where all your stuff deals triple damage. So we got one-shotted by a Balrog, which was kind of funny. Uh, played CGB twice, lost one, won one. The second time, he got to go off with like an Ancestral Recall and having three Bowmen, which is kind of funny. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff, actually. Like, Which is good. That's what you want. Now, I don't know if that's going to hold over whenever you play Historic. Because, again, now you're opening up the Floodgates to way more cards. So I don't know if that's going to be a thing. But at least for Alchemy, it feels like there's a lot of room to play with this set and do some really fun stuff. So I'm kind of digging it, honestly. I think if you wanted to play Alchemy, this is going to at least make Alchemy entertaining for some amount of time, right? Now, obviously, I think like all formats, when we get eight weeks down the road, there will probably be like four big decks or five big decks, something like that. But I at least feel like there's flexibility. And because you get some sub theme stuff, like... The ring tempting you, or like in this deck where we had the ring race doing a thing, you know, you have the scrying component. Like, there's a bunch of different stuff you can do to kind of give you a different deck option to build with, which is pretty sweet. So I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Brian says, I only play Commander Paper these days, and I can't spend any kind of big budget. So I have a 40k precon with a few cheap upgrades. You know, I think the precons, probably for the last four years have been really really good and you can make like 30 40 dollars worth of upgrades to most of them and have a very viable deck to play and if you're not playing competitive commander which i don't i don't play any competitive commander at all all mine super casual battle cruiser you know we're playing eight to ten turns whatever all those different commander decks pre-cons work well for that so if that's what your groups are playing i think those are totally viable sources TF2 custom mode. Man, I can't even remember the last time I fired up TF2. <laughs> uh, I don't get how people can play the same deck all the damn time and have fun. I know I'm not having fun playing over 50% of my games against Mono Red. You know, it's, it's interesting, right? Some people, they're super tight on a budget, right? So they just build what they can and they play the same thing forever. Some people just build a deck because they want to play fast games because they only get to play for like an hour a night that they can fit into their schedule. So if they can knock out six or eight games, great. You know, that's a thing for people. There's different reasons people would want to play the deck. And then sometimes they might have just had bad luck with a bunch of other stuff. And they're like, you know what? I'd at least rather just coin flip with Mono Rand and know I'm going to win at least some number of games. Because that's the other reality, too. Like, people get, and I understand, understandably so, people do get discouraged when they put together decks that just don't work. So then they just go, man, let me just find something that's easy and fast and I already have cards for and I'll just play that. And that's how you end up seeing some of those other decks. And it's always going to be a little bit exacerbated for whatever the game is. I've seen this in other games too. But I feel like it's always going to be a little bit exacerbated online versus then on in paper because everybody's resources are even more limited, right? Because in paper, we can trade cards with each other. We can sell stuff to vendors. We can do all this stuff. But on Arena, you're kind of stuck. Same thing if you play like Hearthstone or whatever. Like, yes, you can dust cards or whatever, but the same way you can get wild cards on Arena, whatever. Like... They're, they're going to have different limitations for different things. But ultimately, like, it's just going to be a slightly different environment than paper for those reasons. Uh, I've tried a couple of other content creators, but no one compares to you. I enjoy the commentary. Oh, you're too kind. You're too kind. You can, you can play all nine Nazgul. Yes, however, they give us all the same picture, which I was very sad about. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a short-form video about that and just complain about it, because that's what I feel like. Like, why did we not get all nine pictures? Uh, my paper play is almost only popper nowadays. We do best of three. We bring three decks, and instead of sideboarding, we switch. Oh, that's a cool way to do it. That's pretty neat. See, this is what I'm saying. Like, all these groups can come up with different ways to play. That's pretty neat. Panic says we can barely hear anything other than me. That's cool. Thanks. 
said you've been happy with it. Yeah, time time's definitely a factor. And that's exactly it, Paul. And like you get it, right? You've got kids and stuff, right? I and even for me, I posted in the Discord just the other day to try to put perspective on how busy I've been. Like I've recorded with decked out you know with nerd girl and them i went up to canada to do the pre pre release and we filmed a whole bunch of stuff with that i did somebody's podcast recently i did commentary for a thing uh what else did i put in there there was something i'm missing a thing cuz that tells you how much stuff i've done i'm like i can't even remember all the things i've done uh but yeah but either way it was just a pile of stuff that you only have so much time and i'm making time literally i have a whole setup i travel with when i go to tournaments specific or not tournaments when I go to just do work so I pop up everything in my hotel room with like a laptop a secondary monitor microphone whatever so I could literally do work wherever I'm at because time is so tight so I can imagine if somebody's just doing the nine to five and coming home you still got to take kids to soccer practice and whatever but you like playing magic yeah you may not have a lot of time to build a lot of decks in arena you know what I mean it just it just may not be a thing so or even to play long games so, yeah, you're, you're going to play one of those faster decks. The thing I would say, though, if, if you are running into a lot of mono red, just build with that in mind. You know, even in recent videos, I've pointed out cards that, like, you know, we're going to play this because of mono red, or we're going to play this way when playing against mono red decks. And you can increase your win percentage against them quite a bit. Now, will you lose some just because, like, yeah, you'll get a draw, ugly draw, you'll stumble, they'll get the high burn draw, and, like, that happens, right? That's just part of playing Magic. But you will win more than you lose... If you just learn how to play against that and also can identify what version of red they're playing so you know what cards to defend against. Once you start figuring those things out, like it, they do become very beatable. Like There's a reason we haven't really seen mono red decks doing well in tournaments anytime recently. right? They're not spectacular right now. They don't have a good over-the-top card. Like The best thing you can do is like Shivan Devastator, which is a fine card, but it's not like the biggest, best dragon thing you can do. It's, it's not a gold span dragon or whatever right it's not that you don't have that level of card you don't have an ember cleave right you don't have whatever the dwarf was right that gives all your stuff to deal an extra damage or two right none of those things exist so they're definitely much more beatable than they have been in the past now that being said once we get to the fall everybody's going to get a whole another 300 cards to mess with and then as the year goes on we're going to have an additional, what, like a thousand cards added to standard. So we're going to have the biggest standard we've ever had. So every deck, I would imagine, is going to be able to do some crazy things. Because every control deck is going to have access to probably a couple more planeswalkers, a couple more kill spells, a couple more counters. The mid range decks are going to have access to a couple more ramp spells, a couple more big bodies that do something, right? The aggro decks are going to get a couple more one and two mana things. So this time next year, standard could be ridiculous looking. Seriously. Looking all fancy and decked out? Yeah, that was the theme for that video. There's very little for sideboard on Mono Red 2. That is true. Mono Red doesn't have a lot of options. Like, they can bring in, like, five damage spells to kill, like, Shieldred and stuff. But, yeah, there's there's not a lot of room currently. Red, red does have that weakness. But, yeah, we've been streaming for quite a bit, y'all. So what I think I'm going to do, because we're coming up on, like, three hours or close to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break so I can grab something to eat, rehydrate, do all that stuff. And then we're going to come back on Twitch, let's say sometime between 4.30, 5 o'clock. Give me a chance to kind of get settled down, get some food on me and all that good stuff. Take care of some business. And then we'll play probably the Simic Scrying deck. I have a Jun list we could take a look at. And maybe, maybe we will uh, put together a green-white humans list. We can see what's available. I haven't tried that yet. So... Yeah, I want to say thanks to everybody. We got up to like 70 people that came and watched the stream, so that was pretty cool. Just kind of impromptu, so I'm glad that worked out. But uh, yeah, this is exciting. This is a fun set. I think if you were thinking about playing it and you already play Alchemy, this is going to be a great addition for you. If you haven't played Alchemy, this might be worth considering. I'm going to be real. Like, I'm not the biggest Alchemy fan. I'm going to be honest. But the games today, even when we're losing, have been very interesting. So just something to think about. But I think that's going to be it for me, y'all. I'm going to sign off. And 